What's up? How you all doing? You ready for this? In probably like six hours, someone's about to be a millionaire. It's not gonna be me, unfortunately. That's true. It's not gonna be any of us. Unless somebody who's at Capcom Cup participating is in my chat right now, in which case you should be focusing if you're trying to win a milli. Also, I showed this off on Twitter, but I got sent the coin for the game formerly known. Camera. As Project L, there we go. Wow, look at that. Boom. There it is. Every time I saw someone this weekend that worked there, I was like, did you make the name? And they're like, no. I'm like, all right. Oh, it's this again. I thought this was a new trailer, but this is a Rob. They, they said nobody. They said there is no would eat a pagoda egg roll. The they said. The city of angels for Capcom Cup team. Oh, no, that shit cracks me up. I didn't eat any pagodas. I didn't see any while I was there. I feel bad. You know, I talked to Mena, and Mena's like, bro, if you see me get fifth place, you better call the cops, man. You better call wellness check. Like, bro, if I don't make top four and I get fifth, the amount of money difference, I don't know if you, you've all seen the prize breakdown, but the money difference is like crazy. It's 1 million first. Fourth is 100k, fifth is 10,000. We're standing on boxes during this, so like under their feet, there are these little boxes to like line them up with the camera. Dude, I almost fell, and everybody else I've seen had almost fell like 500 times standing on these little boxes while we commentate. Oh, let me set this up. Hold on, what up, Blueberry? That's messed up, man. I think the biggest surprise about these groups probably is this. Problem X dying here. It's probably the biggest surprise right here. This is a huge, this is shocking. Is there any other one? This one, he was close to making it out. But everything else I think is like, it's about what I expected. I saw people saying like, whoa, man, look at all these like upsets. Like you guys said X people didn't belong here, whatever. I was like, I feel like every group had people that doesn't surprise me that much make it out now. Let's see, who do we think is the favorites here? I think the favorites are Chris Wong. Gotchkun. This one is, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on the other match. One is probably favorite. This one is, I don't know. This one is, I don't know. This one, I don't know. The winner of this is who I thought would win the tournament, though. The fact that these two are fighting first round in losers is a real shame. I think winning from loser side, like starting in top 16 losers here, is really unlikely you'll win. There's like almost no chance someone from loser side wins. It's really hard. Why is it JP theme again? Phenom played really well in his group. I think Phenom, if I had to rank him in a worldwide player list, I think I don't think he would be somebody who would be in like the top five or something or top 10. But I think his performance in events like this tends to be extremely good. Like something like Capcom Cup, I think he overperforms versus his his rank in this game. In the last game, I think he, he was very, very high up there. He, he tends to perform really well. Also, yeah, Chris Wong played really well and made it really far in every single offline event. He's he's a beast. Like, I think he's definitely an easy favorite to win the tournament. Like, if you pick Chris Wong to win, I wouldn't be that surprised. Oh, he didn't get back heavy kick. He could have hit confirmed to back heavy kick, but he wasn't quite there. Yeah, look at it. Chris Wong has to back up, but he can't give up that much space. Like, if he keeps walking away, he'll get cornered, right? So he's trying to hold some space. Wow, nice. Holy shit. Did you see a spacing on offense there, too? He walked up to Phenom and just blocked right outside of the range of his jab. Wow. Uh-oh, that's big. Crouching combo. Yeah, he got the crouching confirm. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. He could have killed him. He could have done EX, EX level two, or yeah, he could have done all kinds of stuff. And a reset. And no reset. Norway reset. Yeah, maybe he chose not to spend it or he just missed it. Oh, he should have leveled three. Maybe he's too far, though. Sandblast. Say Jam Sandblast in the chat. Sandblast. Sandblast. Phenom, staying steady, just Phenom is famous for that E-League drop where he dropped like a combo and lost $100,000 or whatever. I don't want to curse him, but... Oh, Jerry. 
Oh, that hurts. Honestly, it could have been way worse, though. Wow, what? Taking the tackle. Oh. Got him. Double drive rush. He doesn't even need to spend level one. Hong Kong reset. Time to go to work. Fixes your drive gauge. It gives him a drive rush on offense here too, which is really nice. Oh, he's too close. He also didn't do uh, heavy sandblast. Heavy sandblast is safe on block there. If you keep it tight, then you make it more unsafe. So it's just something to keep in mind. Oh gosh darn it. As a result, their lives are pretty even. Are they all BO5? Yes, the whole bracket is BO5. Top 16. Winner gets one million dollars. Got him. Nice. That's class classic little bait. First game to him is to level three now of the day. <laughs> Brian. Oh, you're a Sajin fan. Huh? Three out of five. Then name all the Sajin. Rip EU watchers. Isn't it already like 11? We give you as much amazing street fighter as we can. Detective Sajin. Mages. Carney Asajan. Stage ham. Sajin Hussein. It's going to be like seven hours. Six or seven, I think. And pasty Steve. What up, Brian? I hope your, uh, your conquest went well. Yeah, this event starting so late, I think, is so that the viewership is available to be watched for Asia. Right? I'm pretty sure that's why, because I think um, in a two or three hours, the viewership will start to be good for Asia. What up, Monkey we Rising? The prime. What does BO5 mean? It means first to three wins instead of uh, BO3, which is first to two wins. Oh, man. Phenom is fit. He, I think he looks a little behind in the neutral. Like, so far, Chris Wong has looked a lot more comfortable. Double drive rush. Level one will do it. What, what noise is that? I barely know what's going on. What about I'm always down to watch fighting games. Yeah, me too. I'm down. Even the games I don't play, it's fun to watch. What up, gangs? He said, Mina, me, me. Yeah, that's big. What up, gangs? I like the combo choice, by the way. Phenom spent no drive gauge, just took like the easy peasy corner carry. <clears throat> <gasps> oh, nice punish. Wow, that's good awareness. Or maybe Phenom was too scared to ant here. I don't know. But either way, he got the punish on the knuckle. Man, look at Chris. Chris Wong is down to sit here for a million dollars until the goddamn Avalon closes. Do you see the way he's just standing there? He's like, nah, bro, I'm chilling. I don't, I don't need to do anything. You see that, like, Chris Wong is vibing. He's like, this venue, you guys better have the contract here until midnight, because I don't got to do a damn thing. Box, box, neutral? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, you guys got me. Oh, that's big. He's dumping it. I don't, it's not enough to kill. Level three wasn't gonna kill you. Oh. This is kind of what I expected, though. <clears throat> Chris Wong is a beast. He's really, really a tough guy to beat here. Game point against Phenom, who is the strongest in EU right now, clearly. Yeah, absolutely, but again, I mean, Chris, he is just... Yeah, I think he's a favorite for a lot of people, Chris Wong, because I think most people expect him to win here, and then being in winner's bracket is a big advantage. Wow. Did you see the micro walk he did right there? And then he just takes the stun. He did a micro walk after the DI to make his combo work, because he was a little too far. That was pretty sick. Next hit wins for him. He's, he saved a lot of meter too. Nice, that's big. Nice, that's big. 
Very safe pressure, too. Man, you see how Chris Wong did nothing? Man, he's so good. He walked, waited, did nothing. Left, left Fiend on parry, left Fiend on whiff. He just has, like, a better... Like, yeah, I think his timing. He just has, like, a better understanding of where he's going to be on the screen and, like, what he wants to do. <clears throat> he almost perfectly parried that crouching medium kick also. He has a, a good understanding of Phenom's rhythm, I think, too. Because if you perfect parry immediately or if you... Um, whoa! That was an accident, by the way. Chris Wong's face was pretty funny. He was like, whoops. Oh, yeah. Take the burnout. I think he tried to do drive rush with jab, probably, is my guess. And Chris Wong probably buffering. Yeah, try to get out of there with the air knuckle. Probably buffering level two here. Oh, oh. Ah. It's going to be expensive if Phenom wants to kill. Yeah, that's why he didn't go for it. Oh! He got him. He's dead. He beat his ass. Not that Phenom is not an incredible player, but Chris Wong is, I think, the man to beat. He's really... Really good. Next up, DCQ Gotchkin. Winner of this match, I think, has a very high chance of winning. Obviously, because this is top eight winners, right? Sien Lashar, Uma Kusanagi. I think the winner of this set uh, also has a very high chance of making it to the winner final. And I think Gotchkin will beat DCQ. So I think it's going to be Chris Wong Gotchkun, and then Sienna Lashar versus whoever here will win. And then the winner of this match is, you know, highly likely to win the tournament. Sienna and Lashar, I expect to beat whoever they play after. Like, I'd be very surprised if they lose. Dude, why is it JP theme again? Ah. Whoever is doing this at Capcom, they know what they're fucking doing. Like, I don't know who it is, but you're a sick fuck. You know that? Naraka. Hey, is that Naraka the same as Naraka Blade Point, by the way? The text looks the same, like on the jersey. It is, right? That's that's tight. I played Naraka for a little bit. Sore. Yeah, I think Goshkin's the favorite here. And I think, um, I would probably think that he's the favorite against Chris Wong also. So, I expect Gotchkin to have a good chance to, to win Capcom Cup. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe DCQ will cook him. DCQ's a beast. He's so good. Also had quite a hard group, huh? Oh, he could have he killed there with the right combo, but it's okay. Yeah, he's in a really good spot anyway. Rashid's great in this game, too. I think Rashid is one of those characters that is really, really solid. I think he has the most depth in the game, maybe. It's one of these two characters, probably, right? Naraka Blade Point is a like beat em up battle royale. It's one of these two characters. Or Chan, yeah, Chan also has a lot. Level two. Yeah, Naraka is like a melee battle royale game. Wow, nice tech. Plus Frames does not drive reversal, which is a really common response there. Wow, nice block. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't level two there, by the way. Nice, that's a heavy. Yeah. Punish counter, he gets heavy. I think on, on counter hit, he gets medium or regular hit. Drive impact. Forward heavy kick. Heavy. Fierce. Oh, you're a Sage Jam fan now? Yeah, string him up, take the drive gauge. Nice jab check. Yeah, it's because DCQ was trying to empty jump so that he could beat uh, Perfect Parry. Uh oh, scary. He's just gonna level two. Oh, a nice jab. He knew that DCQ wanted to like walk up, throw, walk up, heavy kick, walk up, whatever. Great jab. You know, that's like what separates the best players in the world from like pretty good players is knowing when to challenge on defense. It's really hard. Yeah, I think this matchup, Rashid has a lot of, the, of tools to deal with what Rashid wants to, or uh, with uh, what GP wants to represent. And level two is such a big win condition for a character like uh, JP who wants to just like win neutral, chip your drive gauge down, right? Smoke you. Yeah, Rashid is, I think, he's one of the deepest characters in the game in terms of like the amount of shit you can learn with this character with his level two, his combo routing. I mean, yeah, honestly, just deciding what combo to do with this character when you get a hit is hard. 
Oh. He's a really cool design in this game. I think he's super fun. You can play him for... I mean, people have been playing him since he came out last August and still trying to optimize him, right? His decision making is hard to do. Cool character. Gambling channel points? Yeah, that's a great idea. I could do it after this set. I'm down to start doing predictions. Fully charge. Every time he does that too, he can dash, he can mixer, he can eagle spike, he can jump, and the enhanced option is really hard to stop. Spike. Meaty. Oh, he didn't get the combo. I think he had to do heavy heavy punch there maybe, or delay his timing. Pierce. Oh, he made it. Oh, he has level two though. So if he breaks the throw, he's gonna level two. Ah, nice. That's a punish. He didn't give Gotchkin a time to activate his level two. Well, Gotchkin will just send it here with drive rush or some option, get a knockdown, spend his own level two. Yeah, just like that. Goes low. Yeah, look at that. Look at how much drive gauge he won with that interaction. Level two right there got Gotchkun five bars of drive gauge. Like he he actually took JP's drive gauge from full to zero almost. Mm -hmm. Take the plus frames. Boom. Oh no! Oh, he missed. Didn't work. He got lucky. We'll take it. Oh no! Safe jump. Yeah, the medium cane spin from JP is plus 42 on knockdown. It gives you a safe jump. Okay, well, Goshkin's burned out. Mm -hmm. That's meaty. Meaty spike is... Uh, he's chipped. There's nothing he could do about that, by the way. He was actually dead from that in sequence from like five seconds ago because meaty spike is plus. You can't get out with your level one super. Rashid's level two is also not invincible on wake up so he can't use it as an escape option so he was just gonna get chipped he's gonna ex spike him heavy punch ex ghost etc like or spike again whatever he wants to do and he doesn't have an invincible super to get out because his level one is not projectile invincible level two is not invincible at all i hate checkmates i love them maybe if you didn't want to get checkmated you should have uh not put yourself in that position Imagine in, in chess if they were pissed about that. Like, ugh. That's how it goes, man. I mean, is it the case that JP is really good at setting up, setting up checkmates? Yes, that's true. Is he too good at it? Yeah, probably. But that's cool. I like checkmates in fighting games. Can he keep it though? He doesn't have to overextend to get the win. Like, Lordy Stand medium punches might actually work out. Oh no! Just a drop sequence right there from Ooh. Gotchkun. He was dead from 60% health. Not quite. I mean, there was decisions to be made. Even still from there, and he got hit by stuff. Ooh. Yeah, the Naraka jersey is wild. Wow, nice. He was able to recover, and uh, he was he's been doing drive rush forward heavy kick a lot. But again, Gachikun can't let DCQ discourage him from using that as a tool. So you'll see Gachikun bust it out again sooner. Okay, right now. <laughs> but that was a bit closer though, so harder to react to. Yeah, yeah Drive Rush Forward Heavy Kick is really good, honestly, for Rashid. It's really solid. He, he has level 2 to activate here, too. So risky. Gotta be careful, though, to just raw activate against uh, JP, yeah. Oh, meaty? I don't, it didn't look like it was meaty enough that the active frames were gonna matter. Yeah, double jab parry. Nice! That motherfucker is studying, though. Tell me he was not so ready for that. Tell me he was not so ready, though. Double jab, parry the first one, air throw. My bad. My fault. I am an idiot for trying to play the game. That was supposed to be standing heavy punch, probably. Gotchkun is probably dead. Uh, not from the super, but like this spot is pretty hard to win. You need kind of a miracle. Your drive gauge is really bad. 
He dies on that. Yeah. That spot is really hard to win for uh, Gotchkun. All because of an input error. He didn't mean to do that. He was crouching and then probably walked forward and then got core circle forward. Yeah, it's not really that scary mid screen, though. Amnesia is mid screen. You're like, eh. Not that big of a deal. Oh. Yeah, scary though if it got blocked, but cool idea. Man, DZQ. What a monster. Ooh, that whiff in his face like that? And just holds up back? I like it. Honestly. Not that scared to get hit by Rashid just doing medium punch into like standing jab into medium mixer. Like it's not that bad yet. He doesn't have a lot of resources to really convert into anything that big. Am I still in the venue? No. Oh man, Gotchkin is getting beat up. Yeah, DCQ was in SFL before I think, from my memory. When he was a Yurian player. Uh oh, Pierce. I did ask Capcom in the future, like, about doing a co-stream live from the venue. And they were like, oh yeah, why are we not doing that? So, maybe we'll make that happen. Ooh, that was a gnarly whiff punish to E2. Hurts your drive gauge. It hurts your spirit. Let's see. What you got, bro? What you got, Gotchkun? Oh, raw spike? You gonna back up and do mixer? Oh, it's still there. He didn't use it though. Nice. That was really good defense from Gotchkun. Mixer, set up here, safe jump. DCQ is almost burnt out also, which is very spooky. You gotta be careful with the jump too. JP jumping out of the corner is probably the scariest thing for Rashid here. Ooh, I was scared of Amnesia. Oh my god, he's got level two again. Oh my. He risked his whole life. Oh, winner side on that throw. That he was playing so solid defense, mm -hmm. and he was just gonna take the throws. It's big that he has level two again, also, by the way. I mean, because Rashid doesn't really spend meter on anything else, right? He can level two here. Oh, sneaky! That that definitely had a big enough gap that he could do something, but try to bait the throw. Ah, lazy! He just did the parry, thinking he hit a button. Oh no! Okay, level two, level two. Oh, is he scared of the level three? Nice. Okay, okay. His drive gauge is back, most of the way anyway. The thing is, if JP forces a drive impact quick, he, uh, it's a little scary. He has to be conscious of it, even though the wall's not there. C8. Oh, it's gonna push him towards the corner, and Goshkin has no meter. He might be able to string him up and DI him right before he can get his drive gauge back. Can he, can he chip him before he gets drive gauge back? Ah! That, oh, he didn't need a jump! Ah, he could have stayed on the ground. He didn't know. He could have ground blocked the spike, which is really hard to, you know. I don't blame him for jumping. Yeah, it is the Naraka thing. Wow. Yeah, I think you're right about Bruce Lee. This looks like the dragon thing that they did. Damn, that sucks. That was really hard to know. Like, how, how is he supposed to know that he was not going to be chipped? This chip sequence, look at his drive gauge right at the end. Ah, okay, so he blocks this. And then when he jumps, does the jump give him the burnout time? No, he would have been okay. Ooh, it was, he literally got it on this while he was hold, holding up back already. Oh, that's brutal. And I know everybody's fantasy brackets was ruined by that because I don't think anybody picked Lashar to make it out of that group over there. I'm not surprised Lashar made it out though. I don't think it's like a big like call out that Lashar made it out, right? Lashar's a beast. Also, Lashar is a fucking KOF like Evo finalist and shit, right? He, did he win Evo? Lashar's a beast. I don't know why. People are like, yo, this Lashar guy showing up out of nowhere. If you hear, oh, this KOF Evo finalist is playing Street Fighter, like you should probably assume they're good, you know? Here we go, Sien, of course, former Evo champion. Uh, as you call it, mad scientist. He was really one of the players that ushered in the transition. Yeah, I did people hear, see people saying like, you know, man, um, what's it called? It's, it's crazy that these unknown people like Lashar made it out of the, these groups. And I'm like, huh? As DRX Lashar, like with a, on a sponsored gamer. Okay. Using all the unblockable setups with Gen and such. And so this is the way he's always been. I mean, even in five with the Zabuki, that little jump 
release the kunai tactics. You know, oh, I like that. That was tricky. Man, Sien's so good. I, saw use that, so. I like forcing the burn out there. This is plus. Fake fireball throw. Miss. Oh. Baby. DJ's so fun, man. A cool character. Also a character with a high ceiling. He has a pretty low floor, right? Like just do dry brush over and over forehead. But like his ceiling's pretty high. He has a lot of cool stuff. Oh, he's dead. One of the scariest things about this game is when your opponent lives through burnout. What up, my boy? Uh, thanks for the front. When someone lives through burnout, they have so much drive gauge to come kill you. That like Lashar just sent it on like two different things and was like, what up? I have tons of drive gauge. And if I hit you, I just nuke your life bar, you know? So living a burnout is a reward on its own, right? Because being burnt out sucks, but living a burnout gives you so much meter to work with. Yeah, I like this. Forces the burnout. And the bigger thing here is you force the burnout. Nice. Sneaky on the first hit of uh, the back heavy kick. I don't think he was going to do it. I think he would have just rather have just sacrificed this round. Yeah, just take it. I have to Burnout recovery as a comeback mechanic? Honestly, a little bit. A little bit. You can think, talk about it that way. Not quite right, but like, you know, it's it's uh, it's sort of in its own way. Look at how much drive gauge Chun-Li gets back when she does the level 2 combos and how much meter she builds. It's, it's one of her biggest strengths for sure. Level 2 gives her a huge corner carry. Gives her access to, um, what's it called? Time to regen, regen drive gauge. Oh my god. I love Cien just forcing like this. He's doing a good job of just, like, using his drive gauge as a resource to just destroy his opponents. He's like, cool, I'm just going to chip your drive gauge down. Oh my god, they're both going to be burnt out. <gasps> Cien escaped? Okay. Now chip is a big factor for Cien as well. Yeah, he can just get a chip by level 2. Oh, he's, he should do it. He's going to just do it on block. Yeah. That was checkmate. Like, that bag medium punch was level 2. So, Sien had to force and get the hit right there or he was dead. He couldn't throw a fireball either because, like, if you know, you could level 2 through it. There's so many ways to die right there. It was really scary. 10 show kicks. Oh, mi fake mini fireball. Probably not on purpose, but it just happened that way. Oh my god, man, DJ jumped medium kick goes so far. Uh-oh. I think Lashar is going to win the tournament, man. I'm starting to think Lashar is going to win a million dollars today. But you see that actually pressures the opponent to try to challenge a little bit more. And that's why Lashar was able just to go for that. Please don't tell me this is first to two. Okay. Uh, meaty. Oh, not a real meaty fireball. No. Help. Oh, I like that. Wow. I, honestly, I don't think spending the meter there is very good. Like, sure, he reacted, but like, Lashar is minus one meter. That's what I would type in the chat. If I was a shit poster, I would just post minus one meter. That was what I would say. Because, like, what did it do, right? You lo you level one super when you're down 80% of your life, and what do you get? Like, okay, Sian just walked up and then killed him. Like, I don't know. Like, minus one meter. Minus one million. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's really not worth it. Like, when you look at that situation, it's better for Lashar to die. Then spend a level one and then not have it for this round. You know what I mean? Could have won the round. What was the EV on him winning the round? So, like, pretty low. I think if the if you're close to winning, sure. But when you're down 80%, right? When you're down 80%, it's not very good. Yeah, that's big. He already has a level 3 by the time he needs it again, though. He started the round without level 3, though, and it took him a while to build it. Imagine he got a hit at the beginning of the round and then had a level 3. Right? Like, you're, you're looking at the round and not thinking about that scenario, right? Oh, nice. That was a great jump back from Sien. 
That is a problem, but oh, no, he jumped away. Man, Lashar jumping back is so scary because if Sien forces now, Drive Impact is an instant win. Yeah, you see? Oh, he dropped it. Oh, my. Ooh, yeah, you see Sien's face? Look at Sien's face. Ooh, look at Sien's face. He won and look at his face. Ooh, man, they are. We are playing for a million dollars, huh? He is going through. He looks like he's going to bomb it. I don't blame him, man. Would you wake up DP for a million bucks? I would, but that's why I'm not fighting for it. I've seen him a million times. I would wake up DP for like twelve dollars. I wake up DP for free online, and that—that's why I'm not fighting for a million bucks. Meaty. Oh, no confirm. He's supposed to do up kicks or a sobot there, because I think EX just cool was too much meter. But hard to calculate that in the middle of the match, you know. This game's sick, man. You know why this game's so good? Because like, when I watch it, you can you can calculate the right moves as a spectator but the, it's so hard to calculate it as a player level one nice good combo riding you know what i mean as a spectator you can calculate the right decisions but doing it in a match is so hard like the game is just so hard to play like even now you know people have been playing this game for a while right even now when we look back on this capcom cup in like a year or two we're gonna be like man everybody did not know how to play the game Compared to how they are now, you know. Oh, expensive, but it worked. Ah, uh, great check. Yeah, Sien tried to steal too much space with the drive rush. What a blighted. I mean, yeah, the game will change, obviously, but the sentiment is the same. Oh, I love the combo choice. Back heavy punch, drive impact, strip Sien's drive gauge. Like, look at how bad Sien's drive gauge already looks in this round, you know? Without spending, now it's swapped, but... Nice. Man, that is not easy to do. Ooh, base to throw. That's a lot of damage, man, for not spending any other extra drive gauge after that. I think it's very clear that the balance patch with Ed is small. And the big balance patch is later, right? Like this version that they, at the venue that with Ed... People didn't find that many changes. There's only a handful, which makes me think the big patch is later. Ah, oh, crouching hit. Yep. That's a crouching, crouching confirm there. Oh. Nice, sneaky. Oh, Sien tried to get real tricky. I like the idea of like faint fireball button, fake hop. Like, you know, you're trying to... A little sneaky while he's in burnout, but Lashar too solid, man. And her walk speed's too fast. She just walked under and hit jab in a back medium punch. Hey. Yeah, I think Sian is trying to. He's trying to be tricky, which I don't blame him. That is expensive. Ah, okay, okay, that's fine. He doesn't have any drive gauge. That's why he did that. He didn't have any drive gauge. That's why Sian did that combo. He doesn't really have a good route there to do into level 3 anyway. Minus 1 meter. Yeah, I mean, this is a good example, right? Like, imagine if Lashar... Oh, God. Yeah, see, again, he didn't have any drive gauge to do a better combo there. Does he reset on the ground? Oh. Nice. Damn, this shit is close. This is a good little set we got here. Plus one perfect. You see, he's forced off the fireball, and then he has to drive rush later. Man, Chun-Li's fireball is so good. It's really funny that people were talking about whether Chun-Li got nerfs or not in the build at the venue. And people were like, did Chun-Li really deserve nerfs, though? As if most people... Like, there are people who think Chun's the best character in the game. There's plenty of people who think she's top three. And almost everybody on the planet would say her being top five is not surprising. She's a very strong character, so... If she gets any nerfs, it wouldn't be that surprising. 
That's like, imagine if a Luke player was like, oh, did Luke really need nerfs? Like, yeah, dude, I mean, yeah, Chun-Li is as good. Like, right, she's similar in power to that character. So. Maybe she's slightly worse, right? But like, yeah, I mean, the character's really good. I think Ken players would say that, that's true. I can see that. Yeah, JP getting nerfed because Capcom listens to Twitter, clown emoji. Nice, man, Sien has not been able to drive rush at all. Her jab is too effective, right? Like, her her standing jab is too good, and her back medium punch is too good at, like, stuffing stuff like that. Sien cannot establish any kind of drive rush in neutral so far. Like, he's really... Oh, my, help. Help, man. Her jab is the best in the game, yeah. Nice. Nicely done. Well played. Lashara is so good, man. I cannot believe, like... Dude. He, he, how many times did his drive rush get stuck? I feel like it's basically every interaction that Lashar was in, he just saw DJ drive rush and just hit standing jab. Like, her jab is the best, right? So that definitely helps. But, yeah, brutal. DJ green dash not strong enough. He needs buff. He might be on something. Pagoda! Fake fan didn't even eat one? That's correct. I tried. I was like, hey, do you guys know where... I'm not a joke. I was like, where's the pagoda at? I haven't seen it. And they're like, oh, the pagoda guy's walking around downstairs. I was like, where? The staff room, they had like other snacks and stuff, but there was no pagoda. I would have very happily eaten an egg roll. This is fire. This is fire. Rob ain't Sean Evans. Sean Evans the goat though, to be honest. It's not Rob's fault. So talk to me about the process you go through in learning a character like Rashid. <laughs> You got, come on, Rob. You got to hit him with the Sean Evans, man. You got to, like, hit him the hand stuff. You got to... <laughs> come on, Rob. It's well known that you're a baseball fan. If you could go back to any MLB final... Like, just got, you got to ask him something like that, right? You got to hit him with the Sean Evans. The Nardwar, that would be way scarier. He comes up and is, like, asking him about some combo he dropped in an arcade, like, fucking 27 years ago. You're gotcha. good. We have to know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so right. Oh, I'm actually kind of down to see Nardwar interviewing Gotchka. Wait, you guys are so right. How am I with spicy food? Very good. I love spicy food. Huge, huge spicy food fan. Yeah, Uma versus Kusanagi. Probably the match I'm most unsure about who will win. I feel like I had stronger feelings about the other matches. Channel point bets? Oh, you're so right. I Sorry, I've been forgetting. Slash prediction. Yeah, we can do a bet. Uh, who wins? And then, let's see here. This is Uma versus Kusanagi. Alright, we'll do a prediction. I'm down. If I remember, if I forget, my bad. It's my fault. Uma is a beast. He, uh, I'm not surprised that he's in top, top 16 winners. He's very good. Kusanagi, also someone I'm familiar with, also good. Oh, he... Damn, he tried to burn him out and he burned himself out. Well... Crosscut? No crosscut. Dealing with Jinrai when you're in burnout sucks ass. It's really... Yeah, that's plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. doesn't change at all. It's only your defense, the block stun on your defense, but all of your frame data on your offense is exactly the same, so... As if, even if you're Minus one out, meter. Just you guys are toxic, okay. You guys are toxic. Yeah. Minus one round. <laughs> oh, nice buffer. He does get the hit. Just goes for the raw overhead, but good block from Kusanagi and great challenge. Interruption, but no big follow up. Reverse conversion. There's one good one. Minus one meter. Minus one round. One minus one melee. You're only supposed to minus one meter when they do it when they're in burnout and then they lose the round anyway. Like you guys are just being shit posters. The shit post. My shit post was like uh, we thought about it. You guys are being toxic. That's what happens. I guess you're right. Actually, now that I think about it, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be thoughtful, and then the tw the Twitch chat makes that shit fucking toxic. 
Why play like this too? <laughs> You're not gonna see a lot of uh, walking backwards in this match. Yeah, Fang, I'll always root for someone who uses Fang Sui. Fang is a Tekken character. Oh shit, burnout? Nice. If you get a drive impact out in between crouch medium kick and the medium kick drift, minus one drive gauge. There's basically nothing Ken can Thanks, do cheap in second. Uh oh. Over the fireball. Dragon Lash. Big call out. Nice. That always sucks to get hit by. It's an anti throw option. It's really annoying. It's really good, honestly. Here we go. Uma now. Again, burning himself out. How many burnouts have we seen in this match already? Jury players tend to burn themselves out a lot, too, because they spend so much meter doing EX Fireball into. Uh, that was an OS. They wouldn't have come out. No. Yeah, that that was not that was not um. Okay, I'll talk about that because probably important. To talk about that. I'll talk about that after the match, but not a, that wasn't Unga. It was uh. This is an OS. Yes, you can get a meaty overhead in that situation, but Uma perfect back throw. Scary. He puts himself in almost burnout though. So as I'll talk about it. Trade offer minus one meter plus one round. Oh, nice! Wow, this matchup I think is good for for Ken generally. I think that's like the perception. I think Jury doesn't do that well against Ken and Luke. Is the <gasps> that sucks? That happens to her DP a lot. No, one million dollars. No, no. What up, Tuxedo? No, Chip now. On block, it's Chip. Yeah. Ah. That sucks, man. Oh, you're a Sage Jam fan now? That sucks. has gone very, very quickly here. Let's see now what Kusanagi can do to make up for this again. What a great run for him in that group. Man, I wish every character got a costume as good as this jury outfit. Like, I think all of them are pretty good for the most part, but this jury one is, it's just her best outfit. You know? You guys feel me? Combo, nice. Sure, you can. If you try to challenge it, you get frame trapped like that. And on counter hit, Ken does get the Oh shit. Side swap? I like that choice. If you don't side swap there and you're cornered, you probably just lose. Don't dragon lash. Oh, I, could, I felt it in my bones right there that dragon lash is going to come. He's going to get chips soon. Alright, next fireball chips. Yeah. Uh, that was really hard to avoid. I don't think Uma had a good way out there. Yeah, I was hoping. That's a good special, I ain't going to lie. Oh no, that time the OD Yeah, I think four. you only like Ken's outfit three if you're like a 30 year old weeb or Japanese adult. Like, thir sorry, I say 30. What I mean is like late 30s, early 40s. Okay. I thought he was going to go to level one. You know, that's why he went for the side switch right there to re switch it back. But there's that forward heavy kick. Going to be able to calm onto the Feng Shui engine. Yeah, trying to burn him out. Oh, he, just oh, he didn't want to block there. Kusanagi's trying to avoid burnout, but it's going to end up meaning that he's basically dead anyway. DP? Ah, oh, that'll do it too. I like that. I like that option from Uma because the EX Fireball is to set up burnout, and if you jump it, he just anti-airs and kills you anyway. Man, he did round star jump again. Oh, he tried to get out of there. DP time? No, good defense from Kusanagi. Uh-oh. Now you're in burnout whether you... Yeah, I mean, great setup again from Uma. Same thing. He just does fireball and says, "All right, cool. If you block this, it's burnout. If you don't block this, and you jump, I anti air you and you die." Yeah, Uma's too good. Uma's. He cleaned up. He showed up and he cleaned up. All right, so let's talk about this sequence that we saw in this other round. The commentators seemed confused, and you guys were con were asking about this. So, a really common option you see a lot in this game. It's been an option people have done since the game came out. If someone does crouching medium kick into drive rush any button in a drive rush you input a super if there's a gap your reversal will come out so you input super or you input dp if your opponent does something that's a true block string this cannot come out so let's say ken does like a medium and then he does a jab after the drive rush it's a true block string your super won't come out you cannot block in the startup of drive rush for a while there's a number of frames that you have to wait for it to block so usually characters can only do it if you do like heavy button drive rush into block, that's like the only time you'll have enough like blocks done 
to block a super as a reversal. So every time you block button in a drive rush, you can just input super. The commentators are like, oh my God, he just did it. Like he just let it rip. Like that's crazy. This is an OS that has been popular since like the beta or like when the game came out. Something to keep in mind whenever you see people reversal of drive rush buttons. And it depends on the speed of the level ones. Uh, it's more reliable with EXDPs. Yeah, it's also why people do like drive rush into jab, exactly. And don't do drive rush into heavy or something that has a big gap because then it can just get auto DP'd without any thought. And generally, it's a good resource swing to the defender, right? Because like, all right, think about it real quick. If I do crouching medium kick drive rush and you OS with EXDP, I'm spending three bars to do crouching medium kick drive rush. You're spending two bars to reversal DP, right? So I'm spending more resources. Does that make sense? So it's better for the defender to just DP it like every time, basically, as long as it doesn't burn you out. So much during that time, but does that make sense? Like it's just e yeah, it's e economically better. Yeah, nephew went to Japan to train, uh, and he's he played this matchup a lot as everybody else in the world has. But Kwano is the Japan qualifier winner, Evo champion, very strong player. Oh, got him! Plus one meter. Oh my God. Again, he almost burned shit. himself out too. Oh, meaty. Nephew tried to hold up, I think. Probably thinking that Kawano would respect or walk back. Oh, predictions. Sorry. Did I even pay out the last prediction? Yeah, I can do that real quick. Has to be able to stock up. Maintenance gets key with jury. Maintenance is required with this character. Drive gauge, the Fuha stock ups. It is past the first round, but whatever. You guys can still vote. Minus one predict. I think by the. Yeah, I mean, it's about to be one round apiece, so. Jury's got one of them with that crouching medium. Yeah, her crouching medium is really good. It's really noticeable in matchups like Blanca or DJ or like matchups where she's buffering crouching medium punch to stop drive rush or Blanca ball. How good her crouching medium punch is. Oh, that's bad for nephew. Particularly losing that. Oh, yeah, he's fucked. Yeah, uh, GG, bro. That is a brutal, brutal way to go. Look at the damage on this, dude. It's huh? gonna kill. It's gonna kill. Wow, I'm not even gonna ask. I'm not even gonna yep. ask. I'm Luke's even gonna damage on that, his punish <laughs> damage is so high. Like, he just absolutely explodes you. He didn't even do the hard combo. Like, he did an easier combo because he was so fucking dead. It's the first game. That combo was all heavy. It's heavy yeah, into heavy that, into that, heavy that, into that, heavy that. into heavy. There's no scaling on that at all. Really He's still doing back heavy kick right now. He's still dead. Plus one trip to Manzo. Such great conversion to leave him a lot of damage. The one with the first victory, already taken nephew to the corner. We've seen this move before. This matchup, I think, is hard for Jerry, too. I, I think this is a good matchup for Luke. Oh, no cross cut. What a problem game. In the name of the Lord. Look at that. Fighting out in the corner. Oh, space trap. I talked about that. You know, instead of the sword normal, he's got the boulder normal. I don't think he could have killed with double drive rush there. But, um. Even if he could have, it's kind of risky to spend it. Ooh, man. I feel bad for nephew here. This round looks tough. Only a good punish counter away. There's the play. Drive rush for a medium punch. Throw escape from nephew. Same blast. Try to bait something out. Kwano woke up with the throw. Same blast. Same blast. Same blast. Same blast. At that range, probably wouldn't be able to drive rush up and do anything. So he's focused on a little bit. Yeah, you see that crouching medium kick into drive rush and a crouching jab from nephew. But what a perfect carry by nephew. Oh shit. He's level two, yeah. He's going for the feng shui engine. He only had the level two here. So this is gonna have he, to he can fuzzy him here. He goes for the same it's an overhead. Instant overhead. He oh. should be able to kill after that. The fuzzy right there. Catches him with the fuzzy. You may be starting your crouch animation, but you're still It's also much better that Feng Shui engine like that is much better in burnout. Because you have more blocks on your jump normal, so you can do like the double jump in stuff and like String them up with the rising jump normal stuff. It's it's really cheap. Wow, he did the the tar man. You never see that on block anymore. That's like uh, the game just came out thing to do. Yep, drive rush. That was a an expensive drive rush from nephew. Oh, and the parry's even worse. Yeah, he knew he was gonna get burned out, so he just drive reversal there. 
Oh. You're that man? He knew that shit would whip. This guy's cheating. Someone check him, PC. How the hell did he know? Oh, he's actually the best. Nephew's the best. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, get out of there. Run, nephew. Run. Flee. Okay, now you can fight. EX fireball time. Chip. Nice. That's dark. Neph. That's him. You know you're going to watch his YouTube video. Hey, yeah, everyone. You know you're going to check that shit out. He's going to be talking about his Capcom Cup run. I just wanted to chip him. You're going to be watching that shit on YouTube? Me too. Don't worry. Oh, no. Missed the flash knuckle. Missed the, uh, the perfect timing on that charge up flash knuckle. Yeah. Oh my god, he almost got him. Very scary. Crouching medium punch is so scary. It's the it's the wall. Luke just walls your ass out with that button. Very scary for Jerry to try to drive rush. Like that? That's the only way you can set up the drive rushes at the fireballs on screen. But his ability to stuff drive rush is too good. It's what makes Luke Luke so strong, I think. If he didn't have the ability to stuff drive rush so consistently with his normals, I think he'd be strong, but not in contention for the best character. But I think that makes him the best. It's really powerful. Nice. Double drive rush. Easy peasy. No meter spend. Nice kill. Nephew ahead in the set? Oh. Oh, man. He just clipped him low. He's trying to walk back. Sandblast. Man, just... That move is so good. Sandblast is so strong, too. What a fireball. It really is Street Fighter's Gunflame. With the OD fireball. A little bit of damage. This is it's expensive for a nephew. Yeah, it costs a lot of his drive gauge to keep the offense up there. Nah, there's zero reason to spend the bar there for Kawano. The reason you don't spend any meter is because you're ahead 90% life. And you're positioning, you get a hard knockdown on that combo instead. There's like literally no reason to spend meter. You just like take the good knockdown, do the pressure. If it doesn't work, you back up, right? Like you just you do really safe, solid pressure. Yeah, and if you spend meter, chat's gonna spam minus one meter, which that's even worse. Yeah, he just he should just do heavy drive rush and then burn him out here. Yeah, nephew, or, like Kawano doesn't want to block. He's he's trying not to block, no matter what, so he doesn't get burnt out. And honestly, it worked for him. Now he has offense. Oh fuck. That was very scary. I think Nephew died, by the way, if that was blocked. Ah! Chip. Oh. He can't chip him quite yet. Oh, my. Nah, he's different, actually. Nephew is fucking different. I don't know what to tell you. That guy, that man, he's different. That is really hard to do. Because Sandblast needs to whiff, and then you need to do that. That is... Very hard to do. Frame is not projectile interval, but she moves forward enough that she gets right past that projectile. Unless uh, yeah, I cannot believe he did that. Sure. I don't know what would happen if, if nephew did You need Sam Oh, punish. Sure oh, right. no completion. He missed it. Oh, no. Nice. That's a big challenge to do, but oh my. He should level 1. Exactly. He's taking the drive gauge away. Yeah, really, all that matters there is the drive gauge. He doesn't care about anything else. He just, yep, he just wants to force burnout. And he doesn't want to DI. Oh! <laughs> all right, Kawano's just, he's hes like, all right, bro, I got you. I got you, bro. Nah, he, that was clean. What a PC. That bait? That was clean. And then he did level one to force burnout. You see how, okay, important interaction. Let me save that. Okay, we'll save that and I'll talk about it after. Kawano did something really cool. I'll save that in another tab, and I'll talk about it after this round. DP. Ah! It didn't get cross-cut. It, it went out the same side, and then he lost it. Her DP is weird like that. It's really good in some ways, and kind of bad in some ways. It's the weird. Ah! He gave the hit. Yeah, that was drive rush light into the drive impact. And on block, there's enough of a gap there to throw it. 
Yeah, but it was on hit anyway. Didn't matter. Oh. Oh, man. Nephew's... Yeah, he's in a bad spot because... Drive impact scary. I don't think Quano will even do it though. Yeah, he's just gonna do some offense, trick him, do some weird stuff. Yeah, like you don't even need the DI. <gasps> chip though. Chip. Oh my god. Oh, he's gonna get chipped. Ah, I don't think he had a way to avoid that. He was trying to get out. I, I don't know if he would have chipped on block, but damn, last game. Nice reaction from Kawano. Expensive for Nephew, too. He didn't have uh, the gate or the store at the beginning, so he had to spend a lot of gauge on it. Oh, nice block. He challenged. He was like, he thought he was going to throw, I think. Oh! Nephew did the right thing. That forward heavy punch from Luke, if you had a four frame, you can interrupt before the second hit of the tar combo. But if you're late like that, then it trades. Nice delay. He respected DP. Oh, man. On set point. Back from the brink of defeat. <laughs> Kawano trying to clutch up. This is why Nothing. I Nephew just let him have all that space. He didn't want to challenge, I think. <sighs> yeah, that's that's a little... That right there is one of those decisions where you don't do it because it's a good decision. You do it because you want it to work. You know what I mean? You should level two here, probably. Oh. Nephew's out. Ah, but he's dead. Beast mode, baby. Doesn't even need it. We'll play. Choose outcome, Kawano. Complete prediction. Boom. All right, let me show you guys something interesting. So we were talking about drive rush option selects earlier, right? And how you can do a button into drive rush. And if your opponent knows you're going to do it, they can just reversal DP, right? So look at this interaction here. Kawano does heavy punch drive rush into block why does he do this because heavy punch drive rush right if nephew is going to go for dp he can block here so this is a bait he's doing heavy punch drive rush and saying hey do the os do it but nephew sees that it's a heavy button and he's like oh i can't just do dp for free if you block like a medium or like a button with less block stun he would just do dp here right but not only is nephew doing the os on reaction to a drive rush he's doing it on reaction to whether the button is a medium or a heavy. So that's why Kawano did heavy punch, drive rush, nothing into throw there. He was trying to bait Nephew doing the option select that we talked about in the last game. Geek music again. They seem to like a few of the same track. That reaction is absurd. Yeah, her level one goes pretty far. I mean, it shoots a bunch of projectiles, right? The important thing is Nephew cannot misfire it too early and get hit by the sandblast, right? Because it's not projectile involved. And if he's too slow, it just won't combo. Yeah, Kawano's reaction times and Nephew's reaction times are both pretty wild. I'm very impressed with those. Kawano's reactions are so absurd that sometimes I'm like, bro, why does modern exist when you have people like this? Oh, it's like almost just like his reaction times are so absurd. It's like he would never need to select modern. Oh, yeah, that's the first elimination, I guess, right in the top 16. Uma, I'm sure a lot of you know Uma from... Um, ICFC and a lot of people know Nephew and they're like the only two juries left in right cool that they made it Jury is a character that a lot of people are like kind of unsure about in this version of the game But I think she's still pretty solid I wonder if she's gonna end up being so cheap because they nerf the other characters and then she ends up just like not getting hit by anything You know because she's really good knuckle doodang versus NL who will be minus nine hundred and ninety six thousand dollars Jesus when you put it like that. This is uh, this is a good one knuckle doodang one of the the only guy all right and also interesting because uh he was the first capcom cup champ for the last game back in the game playing now he tried to hold up there or backdash i didn't see which i was looking at the sub count but i saw that he got hit grounded so it's got to be one of the two what a piano nice but then he came back and won his next match. And, you know, it, that, it's that kind of passion. That Good I little really jab check from NL. I like that he didn't hit a slower button. He just, he knew he was close enough to hit jab. Really, really clean control in mid-range. Nice whiff punish. Blade, perfect. Besides all the threats, he's figured out how to walk back and avoid some of the better buttons. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. can't can't get swinging after that you gotta be very careful uh oh nice whip punish oh no flash kick i think he was trying to go for a flash kick but somehow came up as a throw i don't know what happened there might have accidentally tapped one of the trigger buttons up there by there accident. we go blade three piece fake fireball that time i like it last time he did a real fireball 
This time it's fake fireball. See if NL will do something. He doesn't do anything. Oh, no. Ooh. Ah, nice cancel. That was beautiful from dude. He kills him off that. He knows that drive impact is very scary. So swinging that move lets him special cancel or super cancel. No, he's definitely dead. Were they saying he wasn't dead? Did they not know that was going to kill? Dude, he is big dead. Come on, man. <laughs> you guys all knew that, right? I knew that. Everybody knew he was dead, right? It's CA. That does a million damage. It does, like, especially because of the gray life, right? It does a million damage. What up, Ben? I love that. I, uh, of course I knew it would kill Smile in the chat. That's pretty good. I feel like he's one of the best zoners just in general. And I'm not talking about, you know, God, I'm talking about Dune, how he has so much variance. That's pretty funny. They must be broke on Will It Kill. Uh, he's just sending it with Heavy Knuckle because of the level three. He knows that he can't, um, what's it called? He knows that he can't the drive impact it anymore, so he's trying to parry it. Yeah, no tech from Dune. Because getting throw baited will lose you the game. Oh. Yeah, you know when you win in Will It Kill, you're like, um, obviously, the answer was so obvious. How did you not know? Hmm. I don't think Drive Impact is the best punish there because he's already in Burnout. But normally, I think that's a good punish. <gasps> oh, my. He, he age checked them. He said, NL, you're old as fuck. I'm sending it. He age checked them. What he needs to fight for is his children in the IRS, all right? <laughs> oh, this is big. Yeah, nice chunk. Pick the drive gauge. Good reaction from Manel. If you have a DP, you can just auto DP or flash kick the, um, what's it called? The drive rushes in this game, but it's really hard to do. It's easier if you have a flash kick. Oh, my Luke. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Alex Lee. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. That's all you. That's all you, bro. Thank you, Alex, for blessing us. Thank you, Alex. Jonathan J. Memphis. Thank you for that crouching medium punch. Oh, man. NL just backed us. He backed up. Boot scoot and boogied away and then just easy peasy. And Alan Burnout, but he's in such a big lead. I don't think it matters. He wins on one hit here, no matter what. Yeah. That was a beatdown. They should play the character select theme more often. Or not the win, the victory theme. The victory theme is pretty good in this game. Perfect parry, basically one of the only good options at that point if he has a level three ready to go. Because if you're a Luke player, every time you throw out that heavy flash knuckle, you had better be buffering that level three super. Man, Knuckle Dude is really, he's trying different stuff to get out, but I think NL's corner, corner control has been really next level. It's much better than I think like a lot of the Lukes he, he normally plays here. Besides maybe like Mena, but yeah, and I was really snappy, really sharp. He doesn't make a lot. Oh my, like, come on, man. Same medium kick and here. Nice stuff. Like, I think, and oh, he missed the knuckle. That's one thing about Luke is that missing those is such a huge swing, especially after you spend drive gauge. Okay. He should be able to knuckle sandblast beast mode, baby. Oh, you're okay. Cleaned it up a bit there. That drop was really catastrophic, though. I know could have lost a round off that. Is he going to switch to Cammy? I don't think so. Minus one British. Oh, my. I cannot believe Heavy Punch hit him there. Oh, he is jamming Crouching Medium Punch in these spots where Dew is just trying to, like, hold space and really smoking him. Like, Dew has taken so much damage from NL just belligerently jamming Crouching Medium Punches in those spots. Why is Luke so tan? He's been living in California. Instead of Memphis. He looks like... Uh, what's it called? He looks like a lot of people you might see in Cal... Oh. Hitting the beach. Oh, he could have even got the jump in, honestly. This is scary because dude dies to EX Fireball. So if he throws a regular boom and then he does EX Sandblast... No counter hits, nothing yeah. there. There it is. Oh, shit. Oh! 
That's beyond the fist. Thank you, Alex. He caught the herb box. That's a javelin normal right there. What the heck? Right. He's buffering that level one. Oh, he let go of parry too early. That's definitely a mistake. Some drops there from Knuckle Do. He let go of parry and didn't block the jump in. Oh my. Oh, smoked. Wow, he's burnt. Wait, this is a huge chance. <laughs> oh, nice. What up, Tammy? That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Luke. My goat. That's oh, my. That was scary. Oh, doing burnout, though. Ugh. Well, he's burned, too. Double burn. Nice. Oh, that was such a little cheesy idea from NL. That was a cheesy little strat. Empty jumping there to make it with land level one. Oh, minus two NA. Oh, yeah, both North American players lost back to back. 74% of you voted for Knuckle Doom. Bunch of Americans, huh? The big thing about this I want to know is do they have a translator who speaks Korean? Or John Barrows. They haven't interviewed Lashar at all, right? Sean Evans wouldn't judge the dab amounts. It's because he matches his person. Like, you ever notice that the guest is like, they have like the second wing and they're sweating and he's like, we're in this together. We're feeling it. His poor taste buds. Like, imagine that man's body. There must be something wrong. Like, his doctor's got to be like, man, have, have you thought about not doing this bullshit? Especially if he does multiple episodes a day. Like, I don't know if he, like, ever... He, they probably film them all over, like, a week-long thing, right? I feel like we run into the same situation in tournaments where, like, we're just so scared to press anything because... We're scared of the the consequences. You know, the game is so volatile. It's gotta be bad. But you had to you had to fight. You had to you had to run your plays. You had to throw JP. And then, yeah, that's how champions are made. You gotta you gotta fight even though you're scared. You gotta fight them even though you're scared. I like that. Is that boot? Oh, boot needs his medicine. Hold on, while they set this up, let me get boot his little boot boot his medicine. What face you making? He'll hear you go. Blanca Chan going up against DJ. And again, in, in, in Japan, you know, uh, Fudo has players like Nishiken and such that do play Blanca, but how often does Fudo play against them is the question. Yeah, and at this level too as well, it's a different sort of neutral you would see from a player. Minar D definitely puts his own stamp with his own characters. So we'll see how Fudo can acclimate. This is one matchup also Mena didn't want to really play in terms of, you know, Blanca. Mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it's too comfortable, but he'll make anything comfortable. What up? Okay, we missed the start. Oh, I could do prediction too. Oh my god. He did go with uh, Blanca, huh? Dude, this is a good ass match. It's a good thing I ordered food. I'm going to need it. I think it makes sense to play uh, Blanca in this matchup too. Because uh, Fudo's best matchup is probably Lou. Like, I think it's, it's his best one. All right, I'm going to do the prediction. Go for it. And he can even charge. Oh, he tried to backdash, but it still caught him out of the backdash. every so often. And I think this character is much less represented. Oh, I like the try. Well, that's an expensive W from Fudo. That's very expensive. Fudo will not be seeing the gates of God for that one. First round of Fudo. What an incredible read right there. Baby Almond and his reactions. Crouching medium punch, medium soap bot right after. Yeah, this this offense legal. All the offense are legal. He holds the parry though. Anti right there with the back heavy kick. Look at this aggression. He does it to keep up the bar as much as possible. He's sequencing for a reason, so he has a sauce for the drive gauge. Man, that's expensive for many. He's done a lot of drive gauge. You can just send it. DJ does not have an invincible level one super, so this is guaranteed, and he gets to set him up after this. And so what's the setup here? Get another block. Yeah, there. Go for the throw. The block of Chan is still there. I like holding up. Out, he makes it out. So you see Mena ignited it though. No, yep. Hop. Just the two of us. <gasps> nice block. block. Damn, that was clutch. That honestly, the blocks from Fudo were sick. And Mena's pressure was really clean. One one here. Of course, still three out of five. 
but two out of three for rounds. And wow, <laughs> double counter hit right there from Fudo wasn't a combo. Oh my. Oh, he went for the, the, the that was very interesting. He tried to drive rush punish the forward heavy punch on block and then Mena just stayed crouching in the coward crouch. Mena's looking for an opportunity to level two here, basically. Like he wants button level, like electricity, EX electricity level two. Now you see Mena already trying to find a way in. And again, like this. Caught him in the legs. Caught him in the legs. I you can just raw ball. But he must have just let go right at that moment. Here comes the block attack. Yeah, this is really scary for Fudo. If you get hit, it's a ton of damage. Yeah, he tried to parry there. That was a punish counter, and here we go. Activated two mix-ups. Uh, just took the drive gauge. He can just do a ball. Well, now he's out of drive gauge, so or level two gauge. So. Ah, nice timing. Man, he just had to hold hold it down. He just had to hold it down. He got a little antsy. A million dollars, man. Wow, that hit in the front? Huh? That hit in the front? Oh, his crashing medium punch lost. Wow. Just goes for the medium. Uh, he had a lot of meter too. I'm surprised he didn't go for the uh, the OD machine gun upper combo. Oh, that was probably hard to punish for DJ at that range. Damn your kill at this point. Next sequence will kill. Ooh, caught him out of the back dash. That's important. Ooh, for his poor drive gauge though. Yeah, a heavy will do it. Okay, that was a huge win for Mena. Not getting burnt out means this round's like winnable. I mean, he still may lose, but. You know, he doesn't instantly lose from the burnout. Oh, man, Fudo is so fucking solid. It's unreal, huh? Fudo is so solid. Boom. Boom. Ah, Fudo's a beast. Take the massage parlor. Oh, here we go from the pack. Weekend pleasure not going to kill. It's gonna do a lot of damage, though. He can force the burnout, though. Uh-huh, that's burnt. Nice block. Man. Oh, my God. I didn't even know he was there. I thought he was at home restreaming. All right, it's him. Three games straight. Two boys. Hear the crowd. I hear yeah, I like that people are calling him Japan guy, like he's not a famous fighting game player. That's funny. Sam Oh, try to backdash a throw. Ooh. Put up fake the drive rush there. Oh my. Which might have a chance to actually what a huge gamble. Kick, not this time. Nah, Fudo, it, it, Fudo, DJ's antiers are really good. So consistent, tries to go for shimmy, but and Fudo is locked so in. Agreed, chat? Here. He is locked the fuck in. Like, look at him go. He actually looks extremely solid. The range he's holding is really good, too. He's, he's one hit away from killing Mena. <gasps> nice jump timing. He didn't do anything for so long, and then it's finally the right time to jump. I see a heartbeat. Oh, the crouching medium kick he finds. All right, he's trying to make it happen. Such a powerful weapon to have. He tried to backdash again, by the way, looking to bait the throw again. Frame kill, text though. Fudo getting active on defense. All right, there's that standing medium. Huge side swap. Hey, hey, hey. So this is a dangerous position here. Can Mena already fight his way? Oh my! The range, the buffer. Thank you, Alex. That does not combo on regular hit, by the way. I know you're in that audience, Dominican Republic. Let me hear you guys. Oh, that's a punish counter too, because it whiffed. Free brick, one plus one drive gauge brick. Oh, nice. What did he even catch there? Uh, he, he had a normal. If you're talking about from the other round, I didn't see what it was, but... I was looking at Mena's bar, I think, when he hit him. Oh. 
What? It's that point. Well. It's that point for Fudo. For Fudo. He's at match point. Okay, I like that he didn't drive rush. I think that was a little spooky at that range. Nice. Man, Fudo's really good at using Sway and Sobot in neutral. I think much better than every other DJ player for the most part at it. <gasps> Huge jump. And he's gonna spend the drive Air knuckle. Right get as much damage, charge the whole entire thing. Oh, oh, I don't even think that's a. Oh, nice. That's to beat the check on the drive rush. Very sneaky. Oh, nice anti air. This is going to hurt. One hit away. Mana elimination hit. One hit will do it for Fudo. Man, this is so scary. He's a, he dies to a throw also, by the way. Like, if Fudo does driver's jab throw, he kills him. Mana can win a one hit, though. He's, he's one hit from winning this round. Man, he is vibing. Mena is chilling. He's been blocking for like 20 seconds in full screen. <gasps> not enough, not enough, not enough. Ah. One hit, man. He just needs one. Fudo doing a whole lot of nothing. I'd be very surprised if he throws a heavy fireball. It's probably going to be a lot of fakes and lights. Oh, I like it. I like the drive reversal. Nice buffer. Okay, he gave it to him. He gave it to him. Fudo decided he was down to commit. But the thing is, that's expensive, man. He has zero meter. Fudo's got two bars. It is very expensive. It's very hard for Mena to win this round still. Like, Fudo has a level three here when he wants it, and Mena does not, which is very scary. Oh, he's going to jump, Fudo. Fudo, Mena is gonna jump at you. Oh man! Perfect parry. Fudo's trying to wait for his drive gauge to come back over three so that he can drive rush hit a button. Now he can do drive rush button into drive rush again and not burn out. Nice, he had down charge. Wow. Ooh, scary. He dies to di. He dies to a hit in a level three. Any hit, any hit kills Mena. He, he's dead to everything. Oh my. Nice. I think he kills him. He kills him here. Double drive rush. There we go. Mena out of the tournament. The Maracas. They got the Maracas out there. You see him throwing the flag to Fudo <laughs> as he moves on the bracket. Fudo's like, I don't really want to do this, but I'm down. All right. He's like, I will raise the flag. I'm not very interested, but I'm down. Let me hear it one time for Mena. Big W. I, I think if Fudo was in winner side, him and Mena were my two choices to win the tournament. I think it's going to be really hard for Fudo to win in losers, but. Yeah, he is, he is really good. Yeah, I mean, if you watch Japanese Street Fighter and you watch Fudo literally beat everybody to death, like, it's actually not close. He beats everybody's ass all the time, always. Him qualifying for Capcom Cup was one of the most one-sided beatdowns I've ever seen in my life. Like, he fucked everybody up. It's actually, honestly, the difference maker, too. Like, he's not in, uh, he was not in SFL finals. So he got to watch Mena play all day yesterday, and he didn't have to play. In Winner's Side, there's four different characters. It's Luke versus JP, Chun versus Jury. And then this is Luke DJ. This is Luke Ken. This is DJ and Rashid. Then this is Ken Luke into Ken. Yeah, Ken doing so bad out here. 900 Ken. Coming up next against Wait, the music? Did you guys hear that? North American what the hell was that? Not that bad. Predictions? You're so right. I was looking at the bracket. It's so hard to, to break him down. Yeah, You're so right. You're so right. Fudo, you know, discussion I was talking about. He's so good at so many different games. Like, same thing that I was talking about with Lashar. Yep. You're good at one fighting game. And in fact, playing multiple fighting games helps a lot. It yeah, can it help does. you build different skills between the games, you know? Helps protect what a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know? But anyway, look at him versus say, oh, dive jump kick. fierce. Yeah, they both got the dive kicks right there. So jump fierce is uh, jump heavy punches. Mm -hmm. Their jump buttons are gnarly. Both so strong. 
Who wins? I don't know. Who wins? You decide. Playing Grand Blue makes you worse at defense. You might be right. I did feel that when I played Grand Blue. Every time someone got near me, I just fucking guard reversal. I did, did the guard counter every time because I was like, all right, cool. And then I didn't have to care. I was like, I don't need this bravery point. That's a defense skip, man. I like that he forced the burnout on block. I also voted for safe to make it out of his group. I think he's really good. I'm not surprised he did it here. What up, Retro? I don't know. Good question. There was no will to kill this month because of uh, Cap Home Cup, so maybe the answer is instead this is how you spend all your channel points. Yeah, safe was a Uranium player in five. He was very good. He's just gonna burn him out here. Yep. This is bad to Kevin. Oh my, that could have been crouching medium heavy knuckle. Very scary. Yeah, I like that. What country is CA? California. Dual Kevin, check that with the crouching medium punch. And safe is burnt out. He's got basically no meter there. This is a tough situation. Dual Kevin can just basically chip him out with sandblast. He only has one EX left. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, he tried. I wonder if that was like dash super. I mean, I've definitely heard some people say, I don't feel like you should be that weak when you're burnt out. No, you should be. No, no, no. In this game, it's earned. And we've seen Safe kill that drive game. She's going to do it right now, even more so. With the level three. CA equals Canada? That seems unlikely. Yeah, this is final day. This is top 16. Loser side. This is the first round of losers. We have not made it through all of the first round matches yet, by the way. We're two hours deep. It's gonna be a long night. There's gonna be a lot of matches. Sandblast. Uh oh. I like that he's doing heavy gen right. I feel like Safe's one of the only Kens I see that do that uh, does the heavy version a lot instead of just doing medium version. Especially because you're fighting a character who can punish it on block with the XDP. So, Mena just lost. Yeah. It's almost done. Uh, the bracket being yeah, three out of five out. instead of two out of three definitely so makes it take longer. Out. That's a oh. This is scary now, but Dual Kevin only has a level two basically at this. Yeah, point. not having level so three means this is not that scary for safe. That'll even put him remotely at the kill. So he's, he's about to be out of burnout, by the way, and as soon as he's out of burnout, like, I mean, I don't know. Oh, he woke up Tatsu. Wow, that's really fortunate. By waking up Tatsu like that. The trade was so much better for him. If he if he traded with a button, Dual Kevin would have got a trade combo and killed him, I think, or gotten close. But the Tatsu knocked him away and got him got him a knockdown and gave safe enough space there to not die, basically. Talking about Kusanagi. Yeah, wake up Tatsu is I mean it's fast, right? Like Tatsu is very quick in this game. It's the same way in the last game too. Safe right there saying, you know, I'm not gonna give you any momentum. And guess what? You are back in the corner. What a Ouch. That sucks. And now safe in the corner. Oh, that double sucks. He's burnt. Does he DP? Yeah, he woke up with something so he wouldn't see how he's hitting buttons on wake up, by the way. Safe was like, I would rather swing and get counter hit than like get burnt out here. Right. His decision making was basically like, all right, man. Like if I'm gonna get, I'm, if you're trying to burn me out, I'm not swinging. Trying to tie this up one to one again. All the matches until grand, I mean, all the way uh, through grand finals, three out of five. Okay, gets the back dash. Yes. He's from Cameroon, the rapper. Oh, he he almost lost the corner there, but it worked out okay. The back throw. Safe. Backs up. I mean, he's got no reason to commit to anything big here. Really no, yeah, yeah, see right there. That was a little bit of an overextension. Nah, it's fine because it does no damage and it takes Kevin's drive gauge. If I was safe, I would have just done uh, another Genrai, let him EXDP and burn himself out, and then you could win the game, right? Like, it, it totally doesn't matter. He's totally fine. Wait, safe is in trouble. He just died for that. He just committed a little bit too much and died for that. Pale Rider definitely gonna finish the job over Damn. here. Dual Kevin ties it up one Damn, to one. Damn, that sucks. 
I heard let's go, Cav. Cause safe is mid best as well. We claim him. Actually, I don't know. Can Canada kind of claim us at this point because they were doing work at CBT online. It's kind of a team kill. These two have played each other quite a bit. Comes out of this up for that melee. So the difference. I mean, dual Kevin is the optimal 2x KO player, right? Because he's two Kev. Like he's there's dual Kevins, 2x KO. This is his game. Didn't catch the back dash of dual Kevin, but he does like that shit is gonna be on un unreal. He's prepared. This is oh, you're a Sage Jam fan now? Impact. Yeah, there's multiple Kevins. Two acts. What a, what a name. I, I want to know, like, can you imagine being in the Riot office and they're like, hey man, our new fighting game is called 2x KO, and you're like, that'll do it. You're like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> You know what kids love? Axis. Again. Oh no! Too close. He, uh, every time I feel like he's got a big lead, he kind of accidentally pushes himself a little too hard, and then he's a wild man. Dosakis though is good. I like Dosakis. Oh man. Put that million dollars in the safe, he says. Oh, bars. Wake up, super nice. We can decide switch off that level one. I think Dozeki is, is funny. That's something that 2x doesn't have. I also like double KO more. I mean, it's hard to find the right name because like all the the joke names I suggested, I don't think are very good. Like Rune Terra Rumble and like all that. Bull Those are all bad too. I don't know how you name a game. It's kind of hard. Dude, he was dancing on him. You want to take the throw? I'll keep throwing. Safe though with the throw tech. Don't get too close to those fireballs. It might be perfect. Oh, nice. Up in front of his face. Safe. Safe about to eliminate Kev. A lot of fighting game names are bad. Like Guilty Gear, Exert, Revelator 2, like Under Night in Birth, Under Sheets in Bed. Like, you know, it's Blaze Blue, Continuum, Chrono, Fanta Like, I mean, yeah, they're not the best. Like, I'm not going to tell you that these are the best names. Okay, we got a lot. We got a lot of misses. But 2x scale is pretty funny. You know, I was thinking about this recently. People who say like, my name is, uh, you know, uh, Street XX Street Fighter fan XX or whatever, like putting XX in your name is an old person thing to do. You know that? Like when you run into a like XX Uchiha fan XX, that guy's like 30. You ever think about that? Like, isn't that unreal? The person whose name is XX U Uchiha Clan XX, that's a 30 year old person. Do you understand that? Like, that's not a child. Like, kids don't do that. From Canada, eliminate the last US player we have here. Got him with the crouch. Oh, the reset. Into the drive impact. Is he going to go for a super? No. He's going to save it to try to finish it off with the Shinuru Repa. Holy shit. Nah, safe is looking a little too comfortable. Yeah, it's level three. The worst part about TTV in your name is that so many people name themselves like something TTV and then they don't stream. And they don't even have an account. Sometimes I look it up and it's not even real. Wait, why is it only these two themes? Actually, now that I think about it, for real, like what's going on with Capcom that it's only this theme and JP? I actually don't get it. All right, so we've done all our first round losers matches. This is where we are. Winner side, top eight, Chris Wong versus DCQ, Lashar versus Uma. Our next four matches will be Kusanagi Kawano, Sienna NL, Gotchkun Fudo, and Phenom versus Save. Who do I think takes the tournament now? Uh, somebody in winner side is most favorable for sure. Like in losers, the person who has the best chance, I think, is Fudo. In winner side, I think I would bet. Mm, this match is really hard to say. I think Lashar is the favorite here, though. Yeah, the way the bracket was shaped up, it did mean that we didn't get to see the birds or like Kaba or like lots of different people make it far. Big Bird is like self admittedly really bad in Capcom. Cup. Like his his results in Capcom Cup are not that good. So I'm not gonna lie. Kawano versus nephew, he looked locked the fuck in. I I kinda have a feeling this might be a beatdown. Maybe I'm wrong, 
But I kind of feel like Kawana is about to he start carving his way through this loser's bracket straight up. Here. I know we've been seeing a lot of this matchup here, but there's a reason for that. Ken versus Luke, two of the strongest characters in this game. Are they? Uh, look, Can someone explain the references to Kusanagi shirts? Yeah, he was wearing like some random like anime hentai shit, right? And then they he he changed shirts after. Oh, he tried to throw a bit in there. And then they made him switch, which is funny. But Kawano on the back foot immediately. It was round start Odie Fireball. So if you're Kawano, you be careful about throwing at the Fireballs because of that option. Here we go. The corner flow. Charge up. Heavy knuckle. Crouching light kick. Wake up. Ken is a top eight character. Oh, no, no, what is this caster saying? They're memeing that all the Ken players Kusanagi say that he sucks. All right. My fault, Kusanagi. My bad, bro. My bad. My fault. My fault, Kusanagi. That is my bad, bro. You're the best. You're the GOAT. Yeah, of course he's dead. Oh, we didn't do predictions yet. All right. Games we have had today, going up over the it's already uh, 1-0, but I'll do another prediction. If I was voting right now, I think I'd still vote for Kawano. Not that I don't think Kusanagi is good. Kusanagi is mad good. Up zero uh, I don't even think that was guaranteed, maybe. No, you did not just do that. You should level one fire, right? Reading the shimmy. I guess the dry gauge regained enough that it didn't matter. Uh oh, 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 oh. Uh, he tried. Uh oh. And now you're at a position where a level two could definitely kill you. Ah! Uh, nah, no way he threw that shit. No way. Uh oh. He's gonna DI. Yep, of course, because if he counter DIs, he dies. <gasps> Kawano? Kawano? Oh, he might dodge it. Oh. Oh, man. I guess the end of it would have hit him anyway. But uh, getting hit by the whole animation sucks. Uh, uh, dude. Holy, he baited the parry. My bad. Oh, he didn't counter hit confirm. Man, I think Kawano's a little shook. He goes for the combo. He wants to build a bunch of that bot. Oh, you're right. He is in CA. You're right. Get more damage. Damn near burnout. He isn't burnout. Kusanagi. I'm about to build that level one, though, so we'll have that option. If it presents itself, it's almost there. Oh, it's not going to reach. Oh, my God. It stays off that momentum because Kusanagi's looking like he was about to run all over this cat. Yeah, Kusanagi's got to watch out. Well, I'm finished. for a lot of shimmies, and Kawano's been calling them out without crouching beating. Yeah, see, this is the OS we talked about earlier. Kusanagi's got to maybe micro walk backwards into a... Providing misleading financial information to chat. How? Lay him on the mat. Yeah, I like these perfect pairs at these ranges. We know the fireball is going to come out. We've also seen. It's not over yet, anyway. All right, it's over. DP, nice. Ready. Oh, scary though for Kusanagi to spend that much bar. He's in burnout now. Dash, dash, dash. Nice. The thing is, he doesn't even need to DI here. It's better for him not to chip. Beast mode, baby. Notice how Kawano didn't even need the DI Ken. He just let Ken panic and try to escape multiple times, and then he just got more damage anyway. Want a piece, guys? You guys are all complaining a minute ago. Oh my god, Sage, why would you say Kawano was going to win? Alright, calm down, man. The preemptive parry for Kusanagi. Come on, man. Kawano's an Evo champion, dude. All right, he knows what he's doing. And Kusanagi's really, really, really fucking good, too. He's been good at this game and other games, too. Kusanagi's good at a bunch of stuff. That's a punish. And he's dead. He committed because backdash into stand jab into crouching heavy is a punish counter combo to whip punish throw like that, but it didn't combo, so... Uh, it was on block, which means it's punishable. 
the auto correct or the cross cut right there. Ooh, nice interrupt. He was trying to sandblast to keep his string safe there. Oh, that was meaty AF. And it was counter hit. I mean, continue the combo off of that. Stand fierce, try to open up the door. That is Kawano. Oh, Kawano just got smothered. He got his ass beat in that round. Let's see what's going down. This is the rubber band match right here. Who is going to go up 2 1? Such an important. Nice. Holy reactions. Man. Dude. Kusanagi was jumping from 60% of the screen away. Oh, he didn't DP that time. He got lucky. I think Kwano was going to DP there anyway, basically. So. Oh. Baited the parry. I can't stand that kid. Oh, my. Kwano in burnout. He does have level 3, but. Oh! What's over the corner? What up, Kamamala? Thanks for the prime. How the fuck did he do that? This guy's a cheater, man. Someone check him PC. Holy nice block. He's going to jam in a button and a drive rush real quick here. Now drive impact scary. Dude, he doesn't cancel into it there, though. That's a punish. But he's about to be burnt. Oh, my God. Kawano is so lucky he's not burnt out right now, by the way. Is he level three? He woke up button. Ah! Oh, my. Kawano's trying. Man. He's trying to make it happen. He's buffering. He's backdash. He's buffering. He's he, he's backdash buffering. He's dead. I love that Kusanagi, by the way, did not drive impact at all. Did not give away a bad, easy W. He just drive rush, jab, caught Kawano slipping. Oh, my. He has no fear. The driver's jabs, the throws. It's too much for Kwano to even handle. Look at that distance outside with the heavy kick. This is not a. This is not looking good for Kwano. Sure, you can. Pay the toll. It's your life. Just gonna stave off the perfect here, but he's got so much room to go. I mean, Kwano. Oh my, that was so good. He had such a good spot, too. And then Kusanagi just wraps such a good option. Kusanagi, as you can see, unsponsored, and he is definitely. People are going to know him now. Oh, yeah. We will love Kusanagi in a second here. We'll see what happens. Kawano goes well with the crouching light kick starter. That jump back could get caught with a level one if he wants to utilize it. Oh, my. Man, Kawano is on the back foot. Down drive gauge. He's about to be burnt. Oh my god, dude. Kusanagi just runs up and throws him. Oh, he hit him. He was trying to bait the throw, though. Oh, Kusanagi's burnt. He's trying to run not to get burnt, but it's, I think it's almost an inevitability. Yeah, he's taking like four hits to not get burnt, actually. Wow. Oh my. Now he wins in one hit. No, no, no. Kawano, is he going to DP? Ah, not enough. Oh, chip now. Oh my. Kusanagi can almost chip him. He's not that. F oh, he panicked. Kusanagi panicked. Oh man, he didn't need to do all that. Okay. So Kawano still in this. Uh oh. Little goblin. Oh, punish. Corner carry. Bop, bop. All right. Kawano spends it, which means if he gets hit by a level three now, he is burnt, basically. Just oh, very, man, very man, scary man. for Kawano here. This is why Kawano is going with those wake up DPs because he knows that no uh -oh. person would do it in these situations. Is he going to go for level three? No, he's Oh, punish. Holy shit. There's that chase down. If you jump back, that's going to hurt. And Kawano now on the verge of tying this up two to two. It's one touch. Oh, he sees him here for sure. They're about even. Their, their burnout gauges are going to be pretty similar here. But obviously, Kusanagi is chipped in one hit. <gasps> he tried to chip him. Oh my, that was so greedy. Nice. That was very good. Oh my. Oh my. 
Oh, man, she goes for the crouching medium punch. Kwano now getting side switch. Dragon Lash DP. Kwano still has a lot of life, though. The corner position, the corner. Kusanagi's got to be right a lot. Okay. Look at this. The meaty stand medium punch on the frame kill. Go right after. Nice. That's like the first time he's repped that side swap combo. <gasps> Uh oh, that's a big drop for. Uh oh, oh my God! Wait, Kwano wins in one hit though. Yep, double drive rush. He doesn't even need the level two. That hurts. That hurts. That's a rough one. Kusanagi had such a good spot too. Early drive gauge is spent by Kawano though, which means Kusanagi can kind of pepper him down here. Yep. That's why he's doing it. Kawano has to do a lot of nothing here to wait for his drive gauge to come back a bit. Mm -hmm. And I like Kusanagi not doing the medium Jinrai autopilot so that he does. Oh my god, he doesn't get burnt and get punished by the DP. Yeah. Okay. Kawano still wins in one hit, though. He's got level three. If he does, like, a crouching medium into knuckle, into heavy knuckle, into level three, I mean, <gasps> he gets a juggle. Chip. Oh, Chip is so scary here, but Kawano just needs one interrupt. Oh, my God. Oh, man. <gasps> nice man if that jab hit holy shit it's last game last round huge meter lead for kawana though oh my god he did not drive rush at him like that the drive rush uh was very scary man the meter lead for kawana though is a huge advantage here when he hits kusanagi he's gonna burn him out with level three no way oh man kawano is scared here he's nice defense oh my that's huge wait but oh it's so close i i think a pixel maybe Oh my god. Damn. Like I said. Oh my god, the flag again. Like I said. Beat down. <laughs> Kokujin about to take his shirt off? I think you're right. He's he's going ham out there. They didn't shoot that many of these interviews, huh? They showed like the same like five or six interviews a bunch of times. Uh, Goda. That reminds me for prize pool. The uh, the breakdown outside of what's it called? This this is where we are right now, right? 13 through 16. This is four thousand dollars for these gamers here, and then for nine through 12, Kusanagi he just got 5k. The biggest difference is the the gap from here, right? 10,000 to a hundred thousand for four. So fifth, fifth and six is the most brutal split. No man. Why do they keep putting this theme on? Come on, dude. I'm just, I'm like, I was in my mind palace enjoying the event, and then JP theme comes back on. And I'm just suffering. Especially, I have to say, going into a match like this, I assume NL is the favorite. Not because of their player skill at all. But because Sien lost on winner's side to Lashar, and you know he's sad. And NL came in on loser's side. So he's off a win. Sien's off a loss, you know. Psychologically, pretty big difference. Yeah, that's a tough spot. His That that low was so close. I don't know if he could have done anything to get out of the throw besides Tekra like backdash. Hold up. Against that knee shot in the air makes that jump a lot faster. Where are you going, so Dad? You need to react with an anti air much sooner. And NL was able to do it. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't even that used Ed's theme. Ed's like, he's coming out. You can promo him by playing that rap. Oh, the fake out. And we saw that previously, right? Back heavy kick has an anti air twist against his character. Do it. Early enough to not get the you whip the shoulder with Luke because it helps you get close enough to do the combo. Yeah, it gives you it gives you a setup. So you do this, this, and then you whiff shoulder, and then it gives you close. 
So you're like plus four or five, six, something like that, depending on the timing and everything. Oh my. He can't get an OD just cool. We might be seeing that a little bit later on, depending on how NL tries to come through through the skies. Sheen, he's got a lot of hard work with at the bottom. Let's see if he can put this man in the massage parlor. Oh my. Here we go. Dumping it. Alright, that's fine with it. If you're an ally, you'll take that. The thing is, Sien spending this, he has to. I agree with it. I like the choice. The problem is, is that his... Yeah, not having meter is such a big deal. I, it's going to come up a lot. But having a level 3 versus not having a level 3 in the last round is a is like the biggest possible deal you could have in this game. It's really, really bad if the last round starts and you don't have a level three. Every day, James. Every day. Crouchy immediately punches the play right here. Back heavy kick. Sneaks in that fat button. Oh, no. Flash knuckle in the air. Yeah, this NL is not bald or losing at card games. Again, finding the DP against the knee shot. Sin has not been able to sneak that in. Try to back dash again. Oh, reversal button. Good fight out from Sin, actually. He lived because of that. And now back to that safe style. Once he's got the lead, it's going to be hard to break him down. He's got the bar at the bottom. He can't throw a bad fireball. Even with those fake outs. Nice oh, buffer. Thank you, Luke. Checks and challenges that drive right. Plus two. I don't even play the poker card game, but all my friends bought the... This is not a joke. Every person I'm friend with bought the poker card game because NL was playing it so badly that they were like, it can't be this hard. And then they bought the game to play it, to try themselves to make sure that he was as bad as they thought and then they were like okay well turns out we were right not literally not a joke that's why they bought the game they were like watching him play they got so pissed that they were like i gotta buy this to try it he misses the follow-up right there he was gonna go for the side switch i think that's what he was thinking about and so he just dropped the timing yeah maybe the best ad of all time like that use the super do not use the ODDP and put yourself in burnout yeah Bellatro, the new game yeah i haven't started playing it but my entire friend group is playing it because they watch nl play it so badly that they're like all right this guy sucks right like the game's not this hard they said you couldn't do it they said you couldn't whip punch that sway but i see it today you know backing up the express person purpose using that crouching medium punch this dude is ridiculous. He was looking for that option. He's like, do it, bro. I dare you. I'm going to bless you. With it's also funny because every time someone who's like new comes in and plays Street Fighter, they're like, wait, NL plays Street Fighter? And then I'm like, well, let me explain. Again, just the raw Sobat right there as a punish counter. I love it. I'm talking about Northern Lion, yes, who's a streamer. Oh my god. Oh no, he was autopiloted on the uh, option already. He was committed. Man, NL wins it. Oh my, he won if he blocked that, which is terrifying. I think right there, NL was like, okay, here's my opportunity to get the aggression going. I can make a comeback with one more mix up. So Sien's like, all right, wake up, ODDP. That's true. This is Korean NL in parentheses if he never left Korea. Not bald. True. Seems just pestering with that button. Finds an opening, finds success. About to put this man to rest, won't kill, but it will put him in bad sort of way. Might be close to burnout here. It actually will be close to burnout. What's the play? Wake I mean, burnout is forced here. Fierce. Oh. That's a punish. Yeah. He walked in and blocked, and then Sian waking up with that. It was too close because of the walk up. You cannot space that properly. He is going to punish you and punish you with a powerful button, too, that is very drive cancelable. He's in so much. Okay, finds a side switch. Shin, OD fireball. He's bald. Oh, my. His turn, or continuous turn, I should say. Double DP, jackknife on point. Frame okay. kill, medium punch. Puts him in burnout. Didn't go for a safe jump, but instead just goes here. Look at this pressure. You this is one of DJ's biggest strengths, by the way. He's really, really good at punishing you for being in burnout. His heavy fireball is plus on block. That's chip. Obviously, beats your reversal. It's really gnarly. So, so hard to deal with in that corner, especially when you're burned out like that. And now that's going to be a punish counter. So here we go. Yeah, combo into the drive impact to burn him out. Remember what he did last round with that burnout. That's true. Back though, a lot of room. Real estate to work with right now. 
Oh no. Oh! You reset him? Sneaky. Ah, very sneaky. Wow, Sien. He really snuck his way into the stun, honestly. He spent no super? Holy shit. That was a really safe choice. I guess he figures he can win this round without it. Uh, uh, or he can win in the next hit without it. Spending it there? I don't know. Oh, he's got him. Well, it worked out, but yeah, that was weird. I'm kind of surprised. I guess I, I guess I understand not spending it. But I'm a little surprised. No, it's minus two. Yeah, EX Sobot's minus two, which is what makes it so good because when your opponent's in burnout. EX Sobot becomes plus two. And you hit Crouching Medium Punch after. If they hit a four frame, it trades, and then you get a trade combo. Really, really good for DJ. Did he say holding down bad? Instead of down back? Just that raw so bad again. Nice, good catch. Oh, I, man, I think he was supposed to level one there anyway. He's, I mean, NL's dead. He shouldn't even level one here. There's no point. If you're NL, you should. I, I think he was supposed to just die there. Because, like, I, yeah, again, what he spent that level one. What are his odds of winning the round, right? It's not, not very high. Yeah, maybe it stops Sienna from building meter, but I, I don't know if it was still worth it. I, I mean, it's honestly, you could just get hit instead, like, try to flail. I don't know. Oh, that's big. Sienna's committed to this round. Better than 0%? Right, but do you want to spend meter? Like, good example. Right here, NL has level 3 and kills Sien. Right. If he didn't level th if he didn't level 1 in the first round, right there, he has meter, kills Sien, and he doesn't lose the, the game. Correct? Like, you know what I mean? That's why I'm talking about that as, like, a factor, right? That actually made a difference right there. But that's just an example. Like, sometimes it can work out for you, right? But sometimes it won't. Which is why, generally, I think, like, if you're down a lot, it's probably not worth it. If you're about to get out of burnout or something, maybe it can be worth it. It, it depends on the scenario, but... Spend meter, get roasted. Die with meter, get roasted. No, I would have said that I like NL saving the meter and not doing level 1 there if he didn't spend it. You know what I mean? It's a hard, it's hard to make the choices, though. This is plus, yeah. Plus 2. He's going to chip him out. Oh, again. Uh, he's about to be out of burnout. This is better. I think this is fine. I actually don't hate this that much. I didn't like the last one as much. I think this one's okay. It's not not my favorite, but I think it's okay. Yeah, but because his chances of winning are so much higher than the other round. Oh, he missed perfect. Oh, he missed the perfect knuckle. Yeah, that one's okay. It's getting out of um, getting out of burnout, such a big swing in power level there. So. Check the situation and NL just hit the button right there. Standing medium kick not cancelable for DJ. Let's get up that strike throw. But NL gets a three piece. We try rush throw. Sand, if you can hear me, please save us. Oh, he couldn't get far enough away. Oh, I did like the jab check from Sand. That was good. He knew that NL was empty jumping to try to bait Perry. Trying to beat the throw. Ah! Oh, he got him. He can't kill him. Throw killed. Yeah, that's why he backdashed. All right, Sian can chip now, though. Soba. Oh, 
A solid double oh my here. dude. Sandblast. Oh, he has buffer. Help. Oh my, he tested the buffer? He just died. I think he just didn't trust him. I'm telling you, they need to buff DJ's drive rush. True, if they buffed DJ's drive rush, he would have made it there on time. I'll tell you that this DJ character is hard to play at a high level, I think. I think he's really easy to play at a lower level, but he's hard to play at a high level, I think. Very easy to drop stuff with him compared to characters like Ken or Luke, I think. NA Wash Sag. It's funny because... Really, really. NAUS uh, SFL won the SFL World Championship yesterday, and it was like, damn. And it kind of the goats, and then they lose today, and it's like, damn. And it kind of trash. <laughs> also, it's not my fault that NA SFL is actually SFL World, and the other two SFLs are SFL Europe and SFL Japan, right? Like, I don't know why it's like that, but it is. Yeah, him spending level one here, I don't like, by the way. I think NL spending level one here, I don't really like it. He's so far from burnout ending, and like, it's very easy for him to get chipped. Yeah, like, I think it's not, that's not worth it. The Street Fighter League US is so weird because like, yeah, it's it's got players from Korea and like Hong Kong and Taiwan and like the Middle East and like so many places. It's very weird. What up, Tao? Tao's on the, he's on my desk now. You won't be able to see him though. He's right here. Like wherever my hand is, but down here below the monitor. Cause like what he does is he comes up to my desk and my keyboard's like right in front of me here. He sits in front of the keyboard right by the monitor where you guys are. And he just stares at the screen. What up, Sarah? There's a basket in front of my CPU, like exhaust fan, and he sleeps there. Just sticks all his fur in there, so my PC won't work. Yeah, a lot of tournaments out there, but here it is. and Fudo. Oh, nice snipe. A double heavy kick, spike. The fireball got the pickup too as well. Overhead plus. Reagan Cyclone. Not the most fun matchup for Rishi. You have better fireballs on the side of DJ, better buttons, but he can't get busy with that level two. Oh, that neutral jump was scary. Again, obviously, uh, not plus, but safe on block. Oh. Wall jump, cyclone, nice chase down. DJ's jumping medium kick. People don't talk about it a ton, I think, but it is extremely, extremely good. We already did the prediction. Ready to do the prediction. Get some distance. Sends up the fireballs. Careful now. Nice interruption against. Get Man, I was asleep. That doesn't sound like a me problem. But I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. Machine gun upper. That's a downer. Okay. Wow, he tried to bait the throw. Man, he really burns himself. That is so terrifying here. Yeah, I think he's just dead. He can chip him. He can kick the tornado in. And then the DI. Oh, that'll do it. Nicely done. Good, good, uh, good awareness from Gotchkin. Yeah. And keep in mind too, I mean, everybody knows that DJ's dry rush is one of the hardest ones to check. It's the fastest. And, and Gotcha Kun is already oh, big. a couple of times with Getting out of the corner like that and the bait. Couldn't quite get him. Oh man. Fudo's in trouble here. Walk up throw right after punish counter, extra damage. And Goshkin's almost on level two again, by the way. Yeah, like we're gonna go back to mid range. Whatever happens here, Goshkin has a level two to sit on, and like he can just immediately threaten it. Nice double rush. Super Rashid kick. Super Rashid kick. Super dash kick. I know. Yeah, Gashu was Capcom Cup champ in 2018. Right. Oh my. He empty jumped, and Fudo almost had the sway anti Media overhead. 
The problem, though, is that, I mean, Goshkun is not in a winning spot here. Let's be honest. Yeah, he's about to get chipped. Gosh, you're gonna have to wake up level one just to get out, but I don't think it was worth it anyway. Oh, he, I think he missed a drive rush there. Oh my, nice stuff. Now, Gotchkun's neutral looks really, uh, really solid. He looked a little shaky, I think, against DCQ earlier, but much better here. What was that? Did you guys hear that? What the hell was that? In this match, I should say, not these two just yet. Yes, yeah, Gotcha yeah. Kun up a game and around, though. Yeah, the way he's playing, though, it might be like Ooh, that. Crouching Stand fierce knock down. I like it. He's going to dash up. Got to deal with this pressure. It's Front throw. 50-50. Oh, oh. Nice defense. block. Forcing the drive reversal oh, like that is good for Gotcha Kun because uh, it still gets the drive gauge on block anyway. There is a bar at the venue. There's like multiple bars at the venue. Oh, he got hit. Wow, he got a mixer and it would have comboed. Or a spike. You know what's messed up? You know what the really fucked up thing is? Fudo's gonna hit him. He's gonna push him to the corner. Some shit's gonna happen. And Gashkun's gonna level two again. You know that shit? Oh. Unless. Wait, he might not get to play the game. Okay, well, he's gonna level two again. What's the mix? You see Fudo's like, I don't oh, he's letting he's letting this it cut off the screen. He's dead, right? Not quite. He if he had level one, he was dead. Oh, he did something. Jump. <gasps> he didn't get a heal spike. Oh no. Oh my. I think he tried to eagle spike, right? That was terrifying. Oh, nice. We do, we do. Anyway, gotcha Kun up to Fudo's got to rub this back. He's got to do it quickly. The corner pressure has been too much. Man. Too often. If Rashid makes it in and DJ doesn't make it in past this in the tournament, because Sien's out now, they're, they're actually about to buff this character's drive rush. You know that? Nice bait. Not a huge punish, honestly. Perfect parry the fireball. Gage nice and healthy. And again, this is where this character loves to work. It's in the corner. Sharp angles where Nice whip on a four heavy or a four medium punch rather. Super Rashid. Super Rashid kick to get the kill. Gotcha Kun will put himself on set point. Yeah, this is the last DJ. In the loser side bracket, remember when gotcha won, about to not even be alive anymore, though. It's, it's almost over. You know, they weren't sure about the character yet. And I remember after gotcha Kun won, I saw all these Rashid players being like, okay, okay. Oh, that's we, huge. We did it now, yeah. Oh, here we go, yeah. Again, not gonna dump it though. Damage that is. Didn't even need to spin the super bar anywhere. Every time you get that punish counter on the on the uh funky slicer it just did so much damage oh that's huge he just hit heavy punch on block so why not it's a throw variation in terms of wake up oh it stuffed the ads here goshkin's disappointed face on mp4 level two nice i like that he didn't spend the level three here don't drop don't drop there you go oh no is that because the first part with no fear just in the game for it wow Maybe he read gotcha. Oh shit, what a round. 99 second. My neutral motherfucker, what's up? Oh, he tried. Oh, this, yeah, he the enhanced option. He gets to do this the uh, sky high after. That's hilarious. Avoiding a terrible situation. There are gas from the crowd, bro. They're like, oh my god. Nice interruption. Crouching Man, what a character. 
to do so. Again, gotcha you know, he might level two again this round if it goes the distance. Immaculate, especially against that diesel jet, right? I mean, that drive rush is so fast. And it has to be, because at least it has so much damage. Gotcha Kun does have the lead, though. Backdash. Uh-oh. Got him. Man. Mena out. Fudo out. Over Fudo. Gotcha Kun. Gotcha go. Man. Gotchkin might might make it all the way back. Oh, that's true. You know, I, I just got reminded thinking of Gotchkin on that. He's on Leverless now, right? How many of the players left are Leverless versus Stick or anything else, right? So, Chris Wong versus DCQ, I think it's double Leverless, right? Lashar and Uma. I don't know what Uma plays on. Lashar is Leverless. Guano is the hitbox. NL, I think NL switch, right? Gotchkun's on it, and then these two are, I think both pad players actually, right? Keyboard is the best controller because it's the fastest way to bitch on Twitter after the side. Yeah, that's true, because if you're on pad or stick, you got to get out your phone and shit, right? Or go to your your keyboard anyway. When one million's on the line, suddenly no one's calling a cheap box anymore. Honestly, late in Street Fighter V's lifespan, it became much more common, and a lot of the pros switch, all of the Street Fighter players. For some games, I, ha I notice that they don't switch. Like Tekken, a lot of the top players are still controller players, right? This fucking music, man. You guys think Ken? Ken versus Ken. Yeah, Phenom is, uh, he's actually an international criminal. He's from nowhere. No is no country. He's, he's not, he doesn't represent any place, yeah. Pretty wild that he's like a pirate who just like runs around the world doing whatever he wants. Uh, he reset him there on purpose so that he could DI. He ended his combo early so that Phenom would build less meter so that he could he couldn't level one there. Let me I'll show that later. What Safe just did is really cool. I'll, I'll show you guys after this game or after this set. There, you know, these first few rounds is always going to be information gathering. They're going to try to find the rhythm on their pokes, check to see whether Diamond Dogs, you know, wake up with drive parries, etc. etc. So, this is all information that you got to build up. But again, safe is no slouch either. He's doing the exact same thing to Phenom. Toe tap gets a counter hit too far for anything else, though. Oh, oh that's no. bad news. Beautiful. You see the enhanced stops for the maximum amount of corner carry. Safe harassing up the corner, continues with a stand light kick, crouching medium kick though from Phenom. He side switch, no run. Level it's not burnout three. though. Yeah. Put his bar back. Yeah, he's gonna put safe at uh, near burnout, but more importantly, honestly, pretty good spot for safe. That's a very winnable round. Oh, you can link, yep. Yeah, really bad. Now Phenom is fucked. Because if you're safe, you can do like whatever kind of pressure you want here, force him to the corner, for, for, force the burnout. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of options. Phenom was kind of stuck. Wow. What a round start. A lot more offense. I think Phenom probably down down for that kind of uh, an approach. Oh my Oh, you're a Sajam fan now? And yet somehow he still has more what up, Kamen? Thanks for the bronze. Than Phenom does. His use is pretty good. Caught him on the way down. Uh, Dark Rose Dan Fierce. Heavy kick Tatsu overhead. Oh, too far for the jab. Uh oh. Chore you can. Every time someone backdashes like that, they're buffering DP. Couldn't quite get over his head. Yeah. Nah, I mean, Phenom tried to panic out a couple of times. I don't blame him. And safe, just very, very clean response. Throw doesn't kill, but next guess. Yeah. I mean, mirror matches are kind of difficult, right? You're playing against a player more than the character. There's some little things you can do back and forth, but it's definitely predicated on the style. And you talked about the wild style of the kid players. Let's go to Phenom. Save looks real solid in this match, I gotta say. Is Phenom the only European player left? I'm shocked that Problem X... Man, that's my biggest surprise of this whole tournament, how badly Problem X did outside of LCQ. I really, I wonder if he was just like tired or nerves or his group just surprised him or what. I, th I thought he would have definitely made it out of his group. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's a tough tournament, man. 
confirming with the stand medium kick is safe. Run cancel. Pushing Queen up to the corner. Oh my. On the low. Level three, level three. The re level man, he does that reset so much. It catches everybody off guard. Level three. No mild. But he does Weird combo. I don't think this is going to kill. But it might burn out Phenom? No, Phenom with a chance. A heavy will burn him out, though. Yeah, and that will, too. You just chase him down. I think Phenom wanted to get away, so that burnout wasn't a threat. Maybe you try to check the dash, even. Yeah, it's a long tournament. I feel bad. Like, winning the LCQ and then having to play the next week and then, like, playing over... Playing, like, seven tournament days in a row. It's really hard to be top form, you know? on that overhead try to go for his own and there's the whiplash now for Phenom recognizing the crouching I say jams. what up combusting I mean I've been I'm tired and I'm not even playing in the tournament I'm working like I was driving in and out of LA like seven days or six or seven days or whatever and like I'm not jet lagged or anything and I'm tired of going to Capcom Cup every day and like showing up and checking in right and I'm just working as a commentator so I can only imagine how tired the players are you know, old man energy. I don't even think it's about being old. These players are young and they're tired. Minus four, so hard to punish, but still, the walk up throw will seal, seal it. Phenom, he's still in. He's still in. Play a little more patient. Wow, what a walk up. It's just, it's just like it drains your body to be in like having adrenaline like that and like playing, you know, this kind of high level. Like this, this what it takes from you every time to do it over and over and over day after day is very tiring. It's like being a top player and just call yourself button masher. You know, I mean. Oh, the walk under. This is beautiful. Man, that was clean from safe. Didn't have to spend any bar either. You're up at 3 a.m. watching Super TF. I actually was waking up at 9 a.m. and going to bed early every day that I work. It's only once I got home, I stayed up. I, I had to wake up at 9 a.m. to go to Capcom Cup every day. Uh, to drive in traffic for like an hour and a half to get there by the time the show was going to start. <laughs> Got him. Alright, game on the board for Phenom. Yeah, I was getting up at 9 a.m. To, to go over 9 a.m. is not that early but it's early it's early in context of the show doesn't start until 12 and i didn't start working until 3 p.m so i woke up at 9 a.m to drive to the suit the like place and then go because uh the way it works is my call time was 10 45 a.m even though i didn't start working until three He's going to block. Yep, of course. So I had to show up at 1045 and then sit there for like four hours and then work. That's how it works. So there you go. Try to pull that back over here. Back in the game. Tech the throw. I mean, you want him to tech the throw? He dies if he techs the throw. Uh-oh. What country is no? No country. Phenom's from nowhere. Oh, he did it. He went for it. He's a rogue pirate. What's a goon to a goblin again? Try a reversal. Top of the corner, another. Oh my god, they both did it. He's gonna burn him out though. Oh, nice jump. Oh, and Phenom trying to parry. Oh, this is so scary for Phenom here. The OD. Oh, he didn't drive rush because he burned himself out. Yeah, he couldn't. Oh my god, sweep is really good when your opponent's in burnout. I can't take this. My heart. Oh my goodness, but they're both- What? what? Wait, 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 where's Phenom? He just was just standing there, and Safe is just gonna go into a level 3 right away because he's down to mm -hmm. two bars. It's he good to do this because it costs you so much drive gauge to do that. Four four bars at the start of the round is expensive. Well, so if he actually gets a hit, he can tie it up. He That's could. important. He's about to side switch off and confirm. Safe. Freight trapped off of that Jinrai. Here's the throw Take from throw. Safe. Dash up, jab, uh oh. Oh my. You know how bad it's got to feel to lose in Capcom Cup to a DI in the corner? Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I'm a safe fan. I think he's real good. I predicted he would make it out of his groups in winners, actually. He made it out in losers, but he's really good. His group was uh, him and Uma were the, the two to make it out. My prediction was him and winners and then Uma and losers, but it ended up being flipped. Uh, it was Uma and winners, him and losers, but they're, they're both really good. So Top eight of the tournament is Chris Wong, DCQ, Lashar versus Uma, Kawano NL, 
And then Goshkun versus Safe. There's only, uh, well, the funny thing is, is the Luke players got to kill each other. So Luke's die here. And then um, if Chris Wong loses, all the Luke's kill each other here. Wow, Jeremy's on his fucking Dwayne The Rock Johnson bullshit. Look at him go. Suited and booted. Dude, the music. What is happening? It's a fucking travesty at this point. Like, they, somebody needs to get fired. Whoever keeps putting on the same song needs to get fired. Two of the strongest characters in the game. Bro, we had Chris Wong's forehead. We had the Soju cam for a second. Keeping that clinical performance. BCQ made it out with a 4 1. And then it's JP theme in the game. Oh my god. Chris Wong trying to adjust that space to get the whip punish. Oh, you saw the start of the media perhaps from DCQ. Chris Wong stuffing it out completely. Opting to go for the damage on the corner carry. What are the odds, huh? Nice off of that oh, nice. Hits him with the down foot heavy punch there. Try to get frame chat, but Chris Wong. A little challenge. I like it. Chris Wong ready. Chris Wong is a beast, by the way. I'm a huge fan. I know we all know Luke's really good, right? Chris Wong is a fucking beast. Agreed. Agreed. Good talk, champ. Good. He just waits patiently there. He loves on dry gauge. He doesn't want to actually burn himself out there. And he did. That's huge. Wow, he committed a crouching heavy punch. He just can't. Oh, man. This one is so good. I mean, so is DZQ, honestly. Both these players are very good. I've been familiar with both of their play for a long time. They're definitely two very solid fighting game players, historically. And they've been awesome in this game. Yeah, Chris Wong, I mean, his offline results speak for themselves now. You thought the in-game commentators were wrong? These two have more beef than a Philly cheesesteak. Oh, that's bad news. I like that he didn't spend anything. Oh my. Oh, he got hit. Oh, he did the easy combo too. Easy, easy. He was ready. He read the bad habits on DCQ's knockdown, and he's gonna close it out with that super art three. Nicely played, man. Has to think about it because sometimes he can be a little. Chris Wong is so good. This motherfucker's gonna win Capcom Cup. Him or Lashar, I think. Starts off with a dry rush there into the crouching medium punch, but again, Chris Wong gets that punish there. Beautiful. A lot of heavy tackle that down forward heavy punch there because it is negative 14. Oh my, Christopher Wong. He's gonna make another bad defensive choice. Good time, this works. And it didn't say punish counter, but he's still got a punish in there. ECQ. Pierce. Max away. This is the first time DCQ has established this set so far. Oh, nice. He's not going to build level 2, but it doesn't matter. Oh my god, this spot in the corner sucks. Look at Chris Wong just down backing for his life. Oh, he's out? Side swap? Nope, just takes the uh, the corner escape. Look at how far he carried him. Good lord. Oh, back throw. Damn, he just did nothing. Oh, punish. Man, that's a really dangerous throw, if I'm honest with you. Oh, I love I love the patience from Chris Wong. I, dude. Dude. He could do standing medium, medium, and a level 2 and just kill him, too. It's very scary. Oh, oh he can't parry. Oh. Long conversion right there, and you've got to set up something nasty here. DCQ, good hold of the parry there. Nice. Ah, oh, the Chris Wong tried to steal his turn back with the, whatever normal it was, it was getting stuffed out. Counter hit, just waiting there. Uh, I mean, Chris Wong still wins on hit though. Oh, that is very scary. Luke's crouching medium. Oh, his chip. And a level three should do if he gets he can do tackle and uh, level two. He could, do, yeah, nice. Sam was trying to jump away. 
but it's a sand blaster just nah chris wong kind of locked in chris wong is already back home like what do i what should i spend this million on he's he's like legit back home already please don't say he's locked in it's true when someone's locked in they always lose whenever someone's like yo man i'm locked in they always lose you know you ask your homie like dude you're like bottom frag right now can you like you gotta lock in bro he's like all right man i'm locking in that's bad news oh no yeah, cancel, try trying to bait the throw or amnesia whatever i like that he backed yeah. off to gave him space i am stupidly locked in right now man who's about to lose Possibly an approach with drive rush for DCQ, a little bit more active. No perfect parry there on the charge. Heavy flash knuckle. There's a crouching hard punch anti air because we seldom see Chris Wong go for that jump. When he does land it, it pays off big. Man, look at how slow this round is too. Oh my how does he do that? Oh, he missed the he missed the perfect knuckle there. But how does Chris Wong do that? He randomly just parries moves in neutral all the time. Have you guys noticed that? He just I don't I don't understand how he does it. He just does it though. Like, yeah, it's unreal. Check him leverless. It's not normally. Wow, he gave up so much space. You know, it's like Chris Wong walks away and like gives up a lot of space, but then whenever he wants, he just drive rush or initiates and he just wins the interactions anyway, so Yeah, I don't know. This is huge here and he can't make a mistake. He's gotta hold this one. He takes one grab. That's one flying buster. Oh, he didn't cross guy, he just let him go. Man, he's just so patient and so solid, like uh oh he backdashed he was looking for it head out of the air nice and here good coverage here dcq doing a good job oh no okay sneaky the ghost messes up the okie though chris wong did everything wrong he was wrong eight times he was wrong eight times to die there he, I, like everything went wrong for him he, he was Wrong on throws and backdash and anti airs and jumps and like yeah he yeah he did a great job. DCQ just he was too ready. Oh my. He's locked in curves. Uh, dude, he's locked in. Look at him. Wait, who did I say he was locked in earlier? Was it Fudo? Oh shit. Walks his way back to the mid screen. He cannot with a normal there. That's why he's blocked. Boom. Grab. He's gonna have to make a choice now. He's locked in, bro. Look at him. What's the decision gonna be? Chris Wong. He's one try for the way. Yeah, he's trying a perfect parry. A stalagmite to get in, but then DCQ's gotta be careful using a phantom. Sending medium punch. Yeah, playing the footsies. Can't jump either. Excellent decision making on defense. Harry covers up pretty much all the I'm a DCQ supporter. No, look at Chris Wong. Bro, it's been 50 seconds and he hasn't done anything. He's just, look at him chill. Like you think I'm joking? Oh, he broke his ankles, he broke his cape's ankles, he broke his shoes ankles, his staff's ankles. Against the machine DCQ a little bit of faulty errors on defense. Made him grab hot air there in that round that is already matched oh. here for Chris Wong. No oh, he didn't even get a good punish. Nah, DCQ is looking a little. He's not quite. He's not quite there right now. Okay, that was Chris Wong guessing with Perry and being wrong in neutral, right there. And DCQ called it out. I like that. Chris Wong, no reaction to that. Anti air. Yes, sir. Set up the double double. He's about to burn himself out. Oh, he's going to get hit by the spike. Yeah. It was still active. He still got a Lavushka to work with. He did build level three. No one knows what that is, Jammers. You can't call a goddamn move a, a goddamn Lavushka or whatever he said, okay? No one knows what that means. What did he call it? He said he, he's got a Babushka. 
I don't know what that is, man. Two to get all the momentum in the world off of a knockdown, but that's the big objective. He has to get one hit to confirm off of. But it's, it's way easier for Luke to get that conversion or even force some sort of action here to then force DCQ to make the defense, and he needs to preserve that meter. Oh my god. Dude, I don't get it. Oh, I, all right, Chris Wong. The, the jig is up, man. You gotta start playing the game. You guys feeling me? You guys know what I mean? The jig is up. You gotta start playing the game now. I think he's starting to play the game too. You see what I mean? Yeah, you got you got to start playing it now. He's the problem is he was locked in and now he's locking up. Like you know he's he's got to start playing the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. He was like too. He was too calm. Now he needs to make some stuff happen. Ooh, he gas parried again. Yeah, he's he's been doing that a lot. <gasps> He's burnt. And it's gonna burn Chris Wong out as well. He's gonna nice adjustment for the juggle. Okay, not a nice adjustment for the juggle. Overhead. Didn't time with the spike though. <gasps> that was a huge dash from Christopher Chris Wong. He wins in one hit now. He just gotta wait. Oh my. Ah, nice block. What well, too early? The block's done from the burnout. Look at that. He just backs up. Sam bless. Sam bless. Chip is a big problem, too. He could just do tackle or knuckle into level three. <gasps> I think he was supposed to level one there. Oh, that's going to be it. Nice. Oh, he fell out. Oh, my. He's chipped. He just won. Holy shit, Chris Wong. Oh my god. How did the Luke win that? Do that much damage without connecting? So he was in burnout. So you take chip in burnout. And level threes do like 25% of your life when you're in burnout. They do a shit ton. It's like a huge amount of damage. Like it's it's like 20% in chip or something. It's a ton. It's at least 10% chip. It's like 40% chip. Maybe even 60. Worst case scenario, right? If Chris Wong wins a million dollars here and then DCQ gets fifth, there is a $990,000 difference between their earnings after that match. Yeah, Chris Wong is guaranteed top three now, which means if he walks out on stage and uh, doesn't hit an attack for the rest of the tournament, he is making $200,000. Yeah, this is a weird juggle too. Man, DCQ had two very weird level two juggles that he didn't know how to optimize because they were just like weird hits. So look at this. He lands the level two punish. The spike hits in the middle of it, and it messed up the juggle. He didn't know how to adjust for this particular instance because like this is hitting Pierce, and then this hits, and then that makes him Pierce too early. So he just had to slightly delay it, but he didn't know because you know it's such a weird interaction. Like the knowledge to ha to know something like that in the heat of the moment is so. Particular, right? All right, let me get this going. Lashar versus Uma. Uma was a beast. He did really well in all of uh, ICFC, like the entire season. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him for missing that. I think 99.9% .9 of even top JP players would probably not know the right combo there. I think she's the complete package for this match, but Uma. But here's my, thing. Up everybody this here's my thing. Yeah, I think Lashar is the favorite, but Uma might be good odds to bet. Lashar is a beast. Like, I don't know. He's incredible. KOF Evil finalist. Uma's been really good all year long, though. And, though, and I think that this character, Jury, somehow is very, like, uncommon, actually. You know what I mean? I feel like at a high level, you don't see her a lot. No double drive rush, level one to kill. I think Uma could have could have killed him there, actually, on that hit. But. And you see what I mean with the defensive choices? Again, we're spinning the wheel here most of the time. But when it doesn't work out for him, it really doesn't work out for him. Trying to get that forward throw here. And because yeah, she's popular at other levels, but in top level tournament play, Jury's results are not as good as um, a, a bunch of other characters like Chun Li, Luke, Ken, JP, DJ. 
He's got to find another way in. He can't just use drive rush. He can't use crouching media kick all the time. See? Back that's there to avoid that even drive rush cancel. What up, there? What up, everybody? Hopefully, you're enjoying the stream. So many people trying to like move forward and jump in the sky. Thanks for coming through and saying what up. Nice. Her jab is also the cheapest, man. Chun Li's jab is wild. Look at the drive gauge. Chun Li will get back from doing this juggle and everything. Boom, boom. Nice combo. Double drive rush? He could have killed. Lashar could have killed. But uh, it would have cost level one. I don't think he wanted to spend it. It was too slow, and Lashar landing that throw for the first round, or the second round, excuse me, with a perfect, nonetheless. And I like that Lashar's thrown out Kokokens immediately because it stops the drive rush factor immediately. So it forces Uma to jump, but he will go into the super art Fuhazan. Take him straight to the corner here. Uh oh. Charges up there with the store. Right in front of him as well. Forward heavy. Punch. That's very scary. Does he force a drive reversal? Oh, he blocked to try to spec drive reversal, I think. Counter could have been so severe. Uh oh. That was not too good there. And Tenso there's a Tenso kick. Kicks, my God, the risk. Well, he's in the oh, there. wow. It hit the late active frames on Crouching Heavy. To defend himself, trapped in the corner here. Oh, this is did, they, did they announce, oh, by the way, way, if the winner of this event gets their own skin again or not? They did that in the past. For those of you who don't know, Capcom Cup champions get to design a skin for their character in game. Or like any character, right? But um, I don't know if they announced that they can do that again or not. It won't kill, right? No, yeah. Wow, he empty jump throws. No, Lashar tried sand medium kick anti here, I think. Well, we saw that Uma was cognizant of some sort of defensive choice that didn't work out. Stores up the fireball again. I like that micro work standing like. They said it's a new color, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, nice dive kick, man. Is Uma about to just about to just clean up here and take out Lashar? Uma's got some good ideas. I know about Uma because of ICFC and uh, Asia. So like ICFC Asia, every time I watch, Uma was just cooking. Jesus, that fierce was so far away. Shut up. Am I not supposed to say he's locked in? You telling me this motherfucker doesn't look locked in? Nice reaction. You could have tried level one back, but he's preserved the bar. That's fine. Still burnout. Here's Lashar. He can build a level one. Back. Yeah, not much Lashar could do there, honestly. Like in burnout, are you gonna dump a level one hoping that you don't get chipped or something? It's yeah. Someone better lock him up. Don't remind me, Moss. I was asking about third strike commentary recently. I was like, who's gonna commentate Evo? Throw there from Lashar. Walks up and gets another one here. Backs away. No dice. Oh man, that's a that's a rough trade for Uma. That hurt. Handling those uh, air to air, the anti air situations from Lashar have been phenomenal. And he's gonna yeah, I mean, the way Chris Wong game. qualified for this was by winning CPT France he's offline. So, well. Again, covering that option just in case they want to jump out and Lashar is like an Evo yeah. finalist. Uma is a really strong player. Make sure you're ready at that point. He can't drive rush cancel. Ooh, and that will man. Be a punish counter that is not as safe as maybe it can. That was a tough round. When the but Uma's got a lot of meter. So you have to try at least he didn't spend anything. Lashar is not afraid to put himself in burnout. In early stages of a match, or even where he really needs to get the corner positioning, so I've noticed about him. Is Hong Kong in Europe? Right here at the moment here. No. Still with normals, but I'm not seeing like a crouch feeding kick drive rush cancel as a whip punish from Uma. But uh, you know, I like the gusto. Oh, the reset. Reset, Uma, you dirty dog. All right, he's gonna go into the super art three here, replenish as much drive gauge as possible, and will he go in and try and bait again, or will he wait? It looks like he waits. He's gonna burn him out the same oh, way. Oh, nice. Side swap. He might have to cancel to his level three. He's yes. gonna have to. He's gonna build up that gauge. This helps the drive gauge a lot, yeah. You know what? This might be checkmate because if Uma doesn't wake up with a reversal, he's gonna do a button into D and it's gonna cause a stun. Yeah, but the no problem, shot. though, is the stun wouldn't have killed him anyway. Oh, what a jump. And Uma about to just upset the whole world. And he's actually 2 0 against one of the favorites. That remain in this tournament here for Catcon Cup 10. I mean, he is he is cooking, man. I don't know. The Asian players we have in the winner side of this, they practice with each other all the time online. No official record, but it's all on CFM. These guys play the heck out of each other. Oh, he doesn't block the air lightning legs. He didn't say punish counter, but he gets the throw anyway, Lashar. So trying to get that. Oh, that was oh my man, Uma has successfully baited that with the dive kick so many times. Doing that against Rashid players, Chun Li players as well. It's been working out really well. Oh nice, that's big. Gets the burnout. Gets the burnout here, Lashar chases him down. 
Trying to bait. That so was plus. Tricky. That was plus. Does he send it on the DI? Oh, I like that stance. Tricky. That was good. Stance, like go under whatever you're trying to do. Light kick DI. That was tricky. Very scary. Did he say HK? Two H. HK. Yeah, so the stance, um, the stance buttons, a bunch of them are cancelable, right? So, like, the lights are cancelable. So, either light into it works, man. He's baited that ant here so many times. A medium's cancelable. Or, a scratchy medium. Heavy's cancelable. Both of them. I think the only button that's not cancelable out of stance is medium punch, right? Oh my god. Oh, he could have just chipped them. Holy shit, that's way better than chipping him. No, he had to hit heavy, heavy punch there. Okay, it worked out. Oh, level one, I'm surprised. Is he just going to level two? Wow, he's still tensioned. Mm, that's big. Level two? No. There it is. Ooh. Wow, Lashar had the hit. He's got a guess. Oh, double overhead. Nice block. That was a game-winning block. Holy shit. No punish, though. He had the... Oh, punish. <gasps> it was out of range. Dude, Uma 3 O's Lashar. 3-0? Lashar's on a lever list. What's Uma on? I don't know the controller here. Oh, looks like Stick. Stick player. Damn, what a beatdown, dude. I don't think any person thought Uma was going to be top three winners. Like, yeah. I, I can't, like, I thought Uma would make it far, but winners finals is wild. Look at this. I know you guys already know because this is your channel points. The odds on that are unbelievable. As usual, I rigged it. You know how much non-responsibility you're assuming there? I even said he was locked in. And that's supposed to be a curse, according to you guys. And then he won. Thoughts? Weird. You guys said if I say someone's locked in, then they're about to go 2x KO on their opponent's ass and then die. What's that about, huh? Save Gotchkun into Lashar is a despicable bracket. Do you guys see that? Hold on, let me pull it up again. Gotchkun save into Lashar. Kawano NL into DCQ. Ooh. There's egg rolls around the ball. You get free <gasps> egg rolls. And we're getting ever so close to counting our first ever millionaire in the world of Street Fighter. You're going to tune in for the rest of it because it's completely unpredictable. We'll see you right after this break. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave me a pen? I've been drawing on analysis for Street Fighter for seven years. I, I can like do whatever I want on this and then it shows up for all of you. That's how it works. Draw some zeros, motherfucker. <laughs> he said, oh shit. <laughs> he was shook. He's like, oh shit, that's not bad at all. <laughs> Draw a cat? I don't need to. He's right there. My camera is too high to see him. <laughs> this motherfucker says, pussy and bio. Shut up. That shit is so funny, man. Every single tweet on the goddamn platform. Remember when that fucking idiot moron who bought the website was like, hey guys, we're gonna get rid of these bots. That guy's so fucking stupid. Must be nice to be so rich that you can be so fucking stupid. It's the host. Hey, that's the Evo Japan host. This guy's a beast, by the way. This guy right here. He, he hosts Evo Japan, and he speaks English and Japanese. And he gets up there and he's just like, Bada 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 doing the Japanese thing and also for everyone at home, welcome to Evolution Japan. And I'm like, what the fuck? How does he do it? He's a beast. What up, Sinister Hipster? He's a monster. I don't know how he does it. This guy's cool. I'm happy that they have him hosting here because uh, he's really good at his job. I don't want to be giving advices all around <laughs> since I'm not in that top eight. But when I was in Evo's top eight, what I was thinking about is that only the tournament, nothing else. 
just focus on playing your best. Don't double think your decisions. If you want a DB, DB. If you want a level three, level three. If you want to do whatever you're thinking of, just do it. Because if you think twice, you might find yourself out of the tournament immediately. I mean, because you guys know, right? All the best players in the world keep flubbing shit up over and over, right? So just doing whatever's comfortable to you is good, uh, good decision making. Finding who's number one. How does it feel like as a champion watching these matches? You see, this guy's fucking English is crazy. His Japanese is crazy. Like this guy's a beast. And like every match, I see a new scenario that I haven't been exposed to before. So it's really amazing to see this type of skill in this tournament. I wanted to see uh, Mena and this top eight. As you can see, I'm rimming the bandits here. Yes, in terms of who I think is going to win the tournament, and I'm going to take a hot and say that you can win loser's bracket. Imagine if Rob TV just switches to Japanese. Imagine, you're just like listening to Rob TV. He's like, oh, I'm here with Pagoda, and then he just switches to Japanese, like out of nowhere. And you're like, oh, shit. Japanese just speaks two languages. American streamer, impossible. You gotta listen to what I'm saying. It's not that he speaks two languages. He's hosting in another language. To do like a professional broadcasting job in two languages is like extra impressive to me for sure. Lucas. The Luke players got to kill each other. I really don't know why they're still playing the JP theme. I want to die. It makes me want to die. I'm tweeting that. I got a lot to know. We'll take a page out of Kusanagi's book and kind of rev up the engines first. But it's going to be Kawano who actually starts off with the offense. You had mentioned it earlier. But what's the defensive decision going to be like? Oh, oh my. It's so it's bad. I cannot believe they keep playing JP theme the whole time. Punch, but they do whiff a fair bit. And, he and he's also OD not afraid to wake up with the OD rising up. Sam Blast. Chase down off Prediction. Place. Pay attention to certain things that NL does, especially off the OD uppercut too. He will try and get the frame advantage. That's true. Him. We didn't do it. OD uppercut. Will he chase down again? Yeah, dashes and tries to bait something there. Kawana did wake up with the button. It's going to be information for NL going forward, right? The next time he lands... So blast. You guys get... I have three Luke emotes for this very occasion. You've seen that time and time again. The tactics are just two steps ahead from the side of Kawano. And Kawano was having a big chat. That was, that must have been accidental. That could have been a hard read there. Might give him the benefit of the doubt. Look like he was looking for that drive rush. Oh, he punished there. Great stops on him. That almost was blocked, by the way. I think that was a delayed medium punch that got caught by the drive reversal from NL. Oh my. I already, one bot already replied on my thing. That level three, and he's going to actually change the direction of how the drive gauges will work right now. He's got to be chilling at this point, right? He doesn't want to overextend with the drive rush. He's going to walk up carefully and see what NL's decision was. NL smart enough to just kind of. JP theme in bio. <laughs> For that matter, but he's still sitting on a critical right. <laughs> あ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ、だって。ああ
So I'm just gonna let him get away with it. Nice. That was really smart. Oh, I said I was gonna show that last time, and then I didn't show it. Okay, I'll show it now. It is fatal shot though, maybe. But I can't. I don't know. Oh, you're a Sajam fan now. What up, Jacob? Thanks for the prime. Oh. You gotta go for the damage, right? Are you gonna go for the damage or the side switch? Indeed, he's gonna go for the advantage as well after the whiff tackle. And now got some bars to his name. Hold on, he's got one shot of a dry brush too. Speaking of which, that's gotta be more than enough. He builds up just a little more to continue on with the combo. Good awareness from NL. Another thing I've observed as well is how Someone tweeted me JP theme and bio. Oh, he almost built the level three too. Honestly, if he built it, he should have spent it, I think. I think he probably would have. Yeah, good choice. He's just gonna walk him down. Oh, wow. What a choice. He found some way to get in. Oh, God. What's the plan here for Kawano? Oh, my. Oh, he's, he's just gonna do drive impact. <gasps> Why didn't he do it? I wonder. Was he just afraid he couldn't true string in and he would throw him? He's got a lot of real estate to work with and things don't work out. Oh my god, he's, he's super. He just done that anyway because if he said punish gun, it would have saved his bar, but he was just mashing or reacting with that super art one. I mean, that reaction time is un unbelievable, too. I don't know, man. It's hard to call, but the gun is going to say, man. Whiff throw level one. So often, like Kawano, it's so hard to get out of that pressure situation, but it was a good lead on the back dash for the throw. Anything else? He gets caught out, similar to what Safe did against Fino in the Ken era, but he's caught in with the loop mirror now as well. Meaty roundhouse there. Delayed throw tech, trying to avoid getting put in a detrimental scenario. They're both low on dry gauge. These guys are literally fighting neck and neck, and it's tantamount on dry gauge until NL have it a little bit faster here, while Kawano is actually trying to avoid the end. Man. This is such an important spot, too. This, this round is every... Oh, no. Oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, okay. The perfect damage calculation. I'm not trying to meme it up. I'm not trying to say the tracks on the game. But that was actually the perfect amount of bar built up for the level three from NL. Man, is Kwano? Kwano versus NL here is so wild. These two are so good, man. They really have. Oh, and it's so difficult, right? NL has been stuttering a lot of his normals and layering them as well against Kwano. That stagger pressure has really led to a little bit of urgency from Kwano. Hence, NL now shifting up the game. Sometimes I feel like Kwano is so belligerent on defense and his reaction is so good that I'm just like, you know what? You got to chief. Like, I'm, I'm just so incredibly impressed by it that I'm like, all right, my bad. You know what I mean? Like, Kwano just does shit sometimes where I'm like, you know what? So he gets the maximum damage there. No parry scaling. I believe it. Yes. You go. Genius, jammers. He had to, man. He had to bust out of that situation to play in the neutral again. Oh, nice bait. Wow, that was sick. Whipping the jab like that? I like it. Yeah, and I also, to be fair, NL is pretty... Like, I think all loose are to an extent, but NL is, like, really ham with crouching medium punch. Like, he really... You saw against Dew in particular, right? Like, he really just is down to swing with it over and over. Nice little walk back into the punish. Getting punish counter there hurts too because you just strip a free drive gauge from whipping the throw. Good level two. Oh, he's, he didn't spend it. Oh, he tried crouching heavy. No. Oh, Kawano chance of winning here. Pretty good, I think. I think NL should have tried to burn out Kawano earlier, so now he's going to suffer for oh. it. But he's still got a level 2, about to build a level 3, so he's going to level 3. Maybe even pump a level 1, but he's been baited to do that before. My God, <laughs> this stagger pressure is so significant. Nice the buffer. He's in level 1 against the drive impact NL, you dog. And that's exactly what you have to do in burnout. You just have to focus on the drive impact. You have to let go of everything else. Your brain is multitasking, and he focuses on the drive impact. He's ready pumping that spot one. Oh, just got the suppressor, by the way. I saw that. Stop. <laughs> so again, with 
Sandblaster in that mid range there. Stop, 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 stop. So work than those projectiles. Stop it. If you guys want to post it, go post it in Capcom Fighters, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was a good walk up from Kwana. Oh my. Okay, okay, okay. I like it. He can take throws because you actually recover the right game while taking throws. That's why he did that. Yeah, go post it on twitch.tv slash avoiding the puddle. Crouching medium punch and neutral. Oh, he kills him here as long as he doesn't drop it. Nice. Evo champ down. It's pretty wild that every match. Oh my, what is that? New theme? They played a new theme? That's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, Kawano out. Evo finalist out of there. This is Capcom Cup champ here too. That means NL. He's fighting up against DCQ. Kawano had a good glow up though in the second half of the season. He was kind of struggling for a little bit, and then he uh, he played a lot better once he had the qualifier. Okay, so something I want to show you guys in the last match. That was cool. Watch, check this out. Peep this. Look at this combo choice for Kawano. Look at this. So he has the hit here. He hits NL. And then notice after he gets this confirm, he doesn't do a combo, right? Why doesn't he do a combo? Like, why would Kawano hit him and then just drop his combo like this? It's because he didn't want to build NL the meter so that he could level one super the drive impact. So he gets the hit, he does EX, and he goes, oh, he's about to have level one super. Drop the combo, drive impact. See that? So he denies, and then he drops the combo. And, you know, that's, you know, I, f I relate to that. The same thing happened earlier. Safe did the exact same thing in his match against Phenom. He purposely drops the combo and then says, like, oh, shit. All right, cool. I'll drive in pack. Dude, they're playing different music. Brilliant lad. Calm demeanor. Oh. He's playing with the utmost confidence as well. How he... Nobody calls that, by the way. I know for sure that come on man oh man that's funny my fault chat i mean he's had that kind of experience with dual kevin in the past maybe not in the bracket but Probably overall, right? Oh, yeah. Running into it there. I think that was a delayed jab. We got kind of hit, but he already gets a delayed tech there. Wake up. It's a firm on the target combo. How much longer? I have to go to sleep? I mean, you got a while, man. You might as well go to sleep. This is like the fourth match of the top eight. There's like six sets to go. If he tried to bait, he knew the risk that was entailed there. And he can whiff punish those with a heavy kick with a hard punch on the crouch media kick or even a stand. Heavy punch, which safe just with. Oh, predictions. Fuck. Man, it's so hard to remember. I'll do a 30 second. We'll do a quick one. Down and out. When you're in a beneficial position, you take advantage of it. He's about to build level two as well, but you might save that for the next round. Delayed throw tip there again. Interesting. Step kick could get challenged. A lot of the guys are whiffing here, but they're trying to get in. Oh, oh nice. The overhead attempt that did right. Although it was backed by the heavy. It's good to go into the light as well. I totally understand that, but safe. Trying to play it unsafe. Gotchkun sniping. Yeah, Gotchkun. Very aware there. He's got interesting buttons. Unorthodox buttons are actually really potent in the neutral there, Rashid. And you've got to be very careful. Both of these guys got to be very careful with their projectiles. But already Gatchkin finds himself trapped in the corner. Oh, no oh. conversion off of the crouch jab. We'll oh, take that. Big damage there. Ooh. Is it safe? What are we going to do? Oh, oh. Counter hit. Oh, he could have killed. But it doesn't Ooh. Wait, maybe DP would have whiffed, but he could have Tatsu'd, right? I, th I think he could have killed there. He didn't believe he was actually going to get the counter hit there, so he went into a Dragon Lash, but he's going to set up a whirlwind here, and he's going to have to deal with it. He can't time a throw. 
That's going to be block stun. Oh, now he can. Oh, boy. Still have to deal with it. The air current from Yusar lingers longer than the other two moves it does. And here comes the safe jump. But he might do an empty one first. Nope. Oh, maybe, maybe he just didn't buy it. That's oh, wrong. honestly, not the best punish. Gashkin didn't have a lot of level one. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of uh, drive gauge, but I got. I can't lie. So far, I think uh, in terms of matchup experience, like Goichi looks like he has Goichi. Gotchkun looks like he has way more. I read Goichi on Twitter while making sure that what's it called? JP was in bio. Have been punished there, that hard, hard kick. The reason I read it was because someone said you can't be good at a high level in fighting games if you play glasses. And someone said, What about Goichi? <laughs> and Sonic Fox. And I was like, Well, there you go. Oh, interrupt. Nice. That was really good awareness from Gotchkin, actually. I'll talk about that, actually. Let's save that in my other monitor here. He's got to be very careful what he does. No delay tech there. From he's got to hold this onslaught, but he uh, yeah, I gotta say, Safe doesn't look like he has the same level of experience in this matchup as Gotchkin is. Because Rashid is not as popular as Ken, and Gotchkin is on a, He's at that level, right? He's the best Rashid, and Japan has tons of Ken players, so. Oh my god! This is the shin kick from the Jinrai. It's a grab to make amends. He's gonna be huge here for Gatchkin if he get out of this. He's looking for the side top as well. And that's why he tried to go for a back. Throw. Doesn't Punk wear glasses? A lot of top players play glasses. I don't know. Or wear glasses. I don't know how you could say it. Yeah. What does Tasty Steve say? Okay, still holding it out here. He thought Gatchkin Oh my. Well, Gatchkin's fucking dead. Okay. That's how you feel? Okay. Chip, man. I'm surprised that he charged up a well shot instead of using your saw, but I guess he was preserving it for the final round. Yeah, there was, if he did level two there, I would have yelled about how he's really bad. There's no reason to level two. He's down too much life. And you got to be ready for this. He's just going to walk up. Overhead. Going to hold it there. Going to wait for it to come close to make it a true block string. you got to deal with this. Yeah, as a 50 50. So here comes. Okay, that's plus. Yeah. Oh, that oh he missed time. Because the Arabian Cyclone is a physical hit, it's not a projectile. Yeah. Get awareness from safe to let that. Oh, nice snipe. Covering the aerial space, jump medium punch. The moment he sees the flip, he just got a back jump. Level two. Two level twos in one round is some really oh, dastardly oh, shit, you know that? But the way he set up that tornado, he's going to push him out. Of it and then try and force that yeah i mean you have to eat the throw because if you choose the tech you're just dead and i'm not even going to tell you pay attention to the world because rashid is absolutely problematic another fine start here for safe because throwing at least you live but i'm telling you when we highlight god school we always talk about his movement and his defensive decision making all right there we go low on drive gauge he can't parry this is a perfect parry and he tries big here for gachigan no, that's big. Huge opportunity for safe. Oh, no. Yeah. I am a fan of Gotchkun not being greedy there. I think Gotchkun not being greedy is impressive resilience. Like, he didn't win, but spending the level two was the best way to guarantee a win. Order. It's and you know, even if he loses the round, I, I think spending a level two is correct. He's conditioned him, especially with all the whirlwinds are coming. Even his conditioning has been conditioned, man. Gachikun is just all over the place. He's looking to run rampant in this set there. That was negative on block, but it was safe. Yeah, safe didn't challenge either. He doesn't want safe getting any momentum, any pressure going there, and that block this is huge. Oh boy. Charge the whirlwind shot, get the pressure. There's nothing he could do about that either. Because his level one is not projectile invuln, and his level two is not invuln at all. Uh, he's he should be dead, I think, if he does the right combo. If he does this whole thing correctly, he's gonna build the bar, medium spinning mixer. Not even. He's going for the different version, and super Rashid kick will close this out. Nice. Oh my God. He beat him down. That was enough. Thank you very much, Capcom, for putting this crazy character in the game because it remains. And the Rashid specialist advances deeper Man. into the bracket. And you both said, look, here's my hot I think the dream scenario is Gajkin winning and losers. The first Capcom Cup finals I ever commentated 
It was Steve and I, and we commentated Goshkun winning. By the way, that interrupt right there was really high level. Just to talk about this, right? So he does this in this set as well, or in this instance as well. He does throw. Ken backdashes. The common thing Ken does when, when he backdashes in the corner is standing jab on punish counter, crouching heavy, heavy Jinrai, right? But because that was counter hit and not punish counter, it doesn't combo. And that means that Gachku knows, oh, cool, I can just interrupt. Counter hit combo, get the knockdown. Because he knows what combo route safe is going for. He's going for jab, crouching heavy, heavy Jinrai first hit, EX, uh, Dragon Lash, side swap. So he like, yeah, he's really smart here. He has uh, the perfect interrupt, perfect combo choice. Very, very good. All right, so we got top five. Oh, these next two matches. If you get fifth place, you make $10,000. If you get top four, you get $100,000. These two matches are worth so much money. Teo got out of the bed. Here he is. You guys can see Teo. And his, he got a spotted belly. See this? Oh, he's jumping over my keyboard. Where you going, man? You want to go in your basket? Okay. Oh, everybody's there. They're going to throw out some, some shirts. Wait, that's every single talent but me. I stayed home. Wait, is David there? Oh, he is. That's every person but me because I'm here. <laughs> that's hype. I'm also the only one getting paid. <laughs> that's how this works. I could be there for free throwing t-shirts into the crowd. Why did I leave? Because uh, I was there like five days in a row and i figured i if i wasn't commentating that i would be here recently predictions you guys are right sorry nl versus dcq this is truly a heartbreaking match if you lose oh nice di you always di against luke players because if they drop the combo then you get to auto punish their knuckle um if you uh if you lose this match you get ten thousand dollars if you win this match the lowest amount of money you can make is a hundred thousand so there's a huge difference in prize pool on this match this is this is it ninety thousand dollar money match probably the most important match in terms of money difference besides first and second was lucky for him a happy accident as we like to call them there and he has to be very careful hopefully he hasn't got ptsd in that mid-range because of what chris Wong did to him oh definitely not well actually maybe nl striking first already uh, dash up checking with a low medium punch again the stop sign of a medium kick and i like the interruption against still swords heavy punch could have been a frame trap there if he committed to the target combo we didn't want to do that it's a back throw what a oh, oh, oh my exchange there all I know is I'm glad this wasn't another event where they hired you and Steve but didn't put you together. Oh, level one. Boom, boom. Not enough. He needed a level two. Oh, he's dead, right? No, he doesn't have level three yet. No, he missed the knuckle. Oh. No, he stuffed it. Oh, my. He could chip him. Oh. Oh, God. Dude, Whoever need, started that trend needs to be brought up on charges. Steve and I were not scheduled to be together at Capcom Cup. I was supposed to be commentating with Jeremy on Saturday or on Friday, and he was commentating with Jammers. And then Jeremy offered to swap, so that means Steve could commentate together. So I wasn't scheduled to commentate with Steve. He's still wishing that crouch and medium kick in the mid range. Um, how many times has NL dropped the important flash knuckle sequences? That's twice over. One was for the game or the round. No. But it actually works out because Jeremy and Jammers are doing top eight anyway. So, like, they're already a duo. Why does this happen? I don't know. The weird thing about being a commentary duo is, like, once you're a duo, people just stop putting you together randomly. That'd be like, what if people hire James and David and they're like, we cannot put these motherfuckers together? <laughs> Every Luke player drops perfect knuckles. Yeah, I mean, Mena dropped them in like Evo top top two, like in the grand finals. People drop them right here. And this, every every Luke player drops them. But there it is on block. Resets things to neutral again. Block capitalized. Ooh, that was huge. Talking about capitalized. Again, what is happening? Oh, this is huge. This is even bigger. Don't drop that. He kept Don't it with drop this. the rest of that. He kept it simple with the sand blaster into the heavy uppercut. Didn't even need the uppercut version there, but again, DCQ. All in short in the neutral here. 
Well, Big Parry gets the throw. Has to be laser focused on how he defends. Gets the parry and he's going to side swap and burn him out. This is what's going to happen. He might only need one DI and set up something nasty. There it is. Okay, he's going to have to do the second one. And he sets up something else instead. I think he's looking for that either way. Yeah, he's going to set him up. Nice! With a switch up on the mix of the target combo. Help. Here comes the pressure. He's got to guess the Oh my. Yeah, yeah he guesses right? correct. That is one of the most deceptive mix ups for JP in the corner. Beautiful guess. And I saw it down for a heavy punch come out again. Oh my. Duck last minute jammers. He didn't want to burn himself out because he wasn't sure if that combo was going to kill him to the level one. The nice. The Man, DCQ played that really composed, by the way. Who would have guessed the throw was coming? DCQ. More than ready to take that risk either way. NL. With the uppercut already ready for DZQ's approach in the air. This neutral has been so, so aggressive from the side of NL. He has indeed trapped in the corner. Oh. That was ambiguous. I don't think he knew which side, so he didn't want to commit. So he takes the light combo instead. And he's back to full screen. Now he's hit with a medium. He's tried a heavy. Try to sneak in there with a dry brush light. Oh my. He just walked up and did that? And NL tried to pursue afterwards. That was a counter hit. Man, that sucks for NL. He gave up so much with the screen right there because he was so scared of the spike. As soon as JP's spike is out and like the hitbox of it is a threat and you can't just dry rush past it, you just kind of have to fall back. If you don't fall back, like the spot you're going to get put in is going to be so bad. DCQ is one hit away from winning here too. We talked about it. He's one of the toughest to nail down. Again, that very, very last delayed tech throw, creating so much space. It's scary to throw Sandblast also because DCQ can level to it. takes the grab this time around. He can afford that. He's got a colossal. If JP wins the tournament and they play a non-JP theme, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my PC out the wall, out the window. Like, dude. Uh oh. What's the commitment gonna be? Jumps away. No threat at all. Man, this is suddenly winnable for NL. Heck, he could have gotten open up. That was a masterclass, which means if DQ gets a conversion, he can't actually get the rounds because he hasn't got level three. No, oh my, no Anthea. He's focused on something else. Oh, boy. Oh, for sure. So, got the level three. Ten seconds on the clock here. He needs to make a big commitment. That is a huge Wait, he's on level three. What? Here he comes. And it's going to freeze the timer as well, so it doesn't matter. And it's going to give him the life lead he needs. It's not going to take the round, but he can back away. He can throw a Sandblast to keep DCQ in check as well if he wants. Nice. Really smart from Menno. I love that he didn't sprint away because then that drive rush would have chased him down. Man, this event is so messed up. These guys are fighting for so much goddamn money. And they're fighting for their lives after like a week and a half. It was sensational indeed. Gets a costume change. Back to the default. Sometimes a change of attire could do the trick in fighting games. Let's see what happens here. He really has to be careful with his neutral because that's where NL has been beating him most. NLRD. <laughs> you can't be too. You can't rest on your laurels in the neutral game either. Mena LD. <laughs> NL's actually been getting wow. through that. That's we haven't what seen are you guys game. on? From NL. At least that's fine, Tommy. Dry rushes in. He tried to run away. We haven't seen an amnesia yet. It's so time. Let's see what happens. And he blocks it out for now. Ah, uh, the third one a little bit too far. A little overzealous on that one. NL trying to reach down below. I said, Mena, what are you on? I was uh, looking at the money split. Mena LD. Oh. Mena did not make a lot of money. <laughs> Holy. Man. Oh, juggle. This time he's right. Man, I cannot believe that the juggle and winner side cost DCQ so much. It's so brutal. Can they agree to split in finals? Just off taxes. So not really. First place is 1 million, second place is 300k, yeah. No, he was a little too far. It's so troublesome for loot players to get that exact punish counter into a crouching heavy punch because of the pushback on it. Has no horizontal range or a lack of horizontal range as well. That button there, the crouching hard punch. It compensates with all the verticals. You know? Yeah, it was 2-1 when he lost, but still, I mean, that drop is what cost him. And it's such an, an, a hard thing to not drop. Bang, bang. 
Good adjustment. And I'll miss the perfect knuckle there, so he had to do a different strength of DP to end that. Could be mana in uh, today. It was Fudo. Again, he's always been jumping away. You can chase that down with level one and level three. We saw Luke players do that earlier today, but I guess he's picking. Yeah, I guess he's picking the opportune moment to do so. Oh my. Gotta make a choice now, DCQ. Oh my. Yeah, it's always parry. If they, if they get punish countered by a throw like that, it's parry. Looks like it. Yep, he's gonna keep it clean. Set up a departure as well. What's the choice from NL? Good defensive decision making from He should be able to clean this up if he doesn't drop. Nice. You already know what it is. That's game two in the pocket of NL. It's gonna be six punches that takes him into the lead in this set. Remember, loser goes home. I guess it is true though that if you're a mena on the topic of money, that you do make the money from SFL at least, right? Because his match presence is so strong, it's overwhelming. So DCQ really doesn't want to afford to do an amnesia and have it. But I want to lock in someone. I think they both look pretty locked in. This match is pretty even. Position. And he's trying to keep it neutral as well. And NL's actually been phenomenal handling the level two super art as well, by the way. Yeah, I mean, the matches with this tournament have been great. I know people are... Oh, he tried to teleport. Okay, so he looks like he was gonna I know people are like, man, Luke, ugh, for, um, for him being on the screen or whatever. But, you know, the matches for this tournament have been really, really, really fun to watch. He's in down with a forward throw again, and he might try to sneak in a third one if he has to, and he tries. Ah, too late. I don't think he could have uh, neutral jump baited there. Because he did it at, like, the earliest time, and it still wasn't fast enough to bait the throw. He did get the appropriate throw bait. The jumping heavy punch just not good enough. He seems very scared in the neutral, the mid range here. Yeah, being stubborn enough and gets his conversion. Builds up another super art here as well. Still no amnesia. Yes, ah. He's being very safe with his defensive choices here, DCQ. He's doing things in trepidation at this point. Suppressor blocks it out. He does not know what to do. He doesn't have the a counter. The stagger as well. And now he's looking for oh the my. He stole like nine Final turns. Step backwards opened up everything for DCQ now. Level three. Yes, he does. And this is not going to put him full screen. This is going to put him at a decent range here. Can set up a departure. But I don't think he wants to splurge that meter. Not there. That's why he went for a throw instead. Oh. That medium punch on the counter hit doesn't get anything. Charges up after what he did. I mean, no I don't know, man. This is very, very winnable for NL. I think it has been. What a block. He can mash out a super at some point if you're not careful. He's going to bait him into doing a, a phantom or something so he can catch it. <gasps> nice whip punish. He doesn't kill, though. And Al can chip him very easily. DP. Oh, oh he could have level three there. Oh, actually, that might have been a true string, maybe. He had other ideas. He was mashing after two OD moves were unsuccessful here. He tried for sure. He definitely wanted to to reversal and and kill him. Try to check with each other with the crouching medium punches. Yeah, there should there should be a gap for him to super there. I think even it, though he's in burnout. A dangerous scenario. It's away as well. Taking that risk there. Out of oh, that is bad. Yeah, that is. He spent way too much resources for sure. He might still be okay, but. On offense, DCQ now able to swing a little bit more comfort because of the fact that NL is in this burnout state now. DCQ, he's looking to walk him down a little bit more towards the middle screen, but but it's allowing NL to replenish his drive gauge. Yes. It is completely refreshed now by not doing anything. He actually gave NL a second round of dry stock. He could have got a bonus. Oh, the second one wasn't there. It's okay though. Come in time for the punish count. Did and he blocks it out. Nice. Throw for twenty percent. Departure double time. Oh hello, I didn't see Instant that before. Snap, by the way. This is good, but NL still looking for that drive rush opportunity. Almost got it. Put him in near burnout as well. Can't be too risky with any spike or any jump. Ooh. The gap. He wants this is, uh, if I would not feel very good in DCQ spot, to be honest with you. Yeah, now it's a one-hit game. This is, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. He was so dead. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. DCQ spot is not good. Oh, my God. He lived. Holy shit. His spot was not good. Hon honestly. 
Oh, you were safe. Yeah, that was really dangerous. That entire time, he was one hit away from losing. And NL hit him and didn't cancel on a drive rush like twice. Like, full times, he just hit him and did nothing. Would you wake up DP for 90k? Why not? Oh, that's like the first one. Yeah, I haven't seen a single amnesia so far. Very nice. After the brutal spike. Snaps his fingers. And NL's always dashing after the departure's placed above his head just to remove the, uh, that factor just for a split second before he goes back to see how DCQ reacts. So right now that crouch and medium punch with malicious intent. That's the first time he's really he's really swung on defense a lot too. Amnesia and that. I wonder if the idea from DCQ in this is like to represent way more stuff on defense now and like, like hey, what up? I haven't done this the whole time. Man, he also, every time he perfect parries those uh, sand blasts, he doesn't swing after. Yeah, lucky for NL though, he'll take it. Because if that's a jump over the sand blast, he's... Yeah, he might be dead. Level 2 is also very scary here too. But he couldn't walk away either because there's nowhere to go. So he's nice. He's in the corner. So he's going to get the conversion into the stalagmite. And then another forward dash there. And then he decides to make an action on the wake up. A slight hezzy. Big, big opening. Loki's there. Spine buster. That's one. Dash up normally. Nah, he's not taking, mate. Oh my. Wow, that was so late. Out there and he's still firm in his ground. He's going to try and escape a different way. Oh, he got him. That should be it if he doesn't drop. 90,000 dollars richer. And that is going to be NL advancing deeper into the bracket and closer to the ground. Uh, if you're NL, you're so happy. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> Get it twisted. Like a lot of you, I'm sure I've played like in an online tournament or a local and been nervous, right? I'm sure some of you have played on bigger stages and been nervous, but with this much stuff on the line, it's yeah, it's brutal. The nerves have to be absurd. To play pretty well in this environment is really, really hard, and they're making decisions that are extremely high level consistently, right? So do I think they're increasing the prize pool next season. I'd be surprised if it's increased. I, I would expect it to be similar though. Because the problem for them, sort of, right, is if you go backwards, then people are going to be like, what the fuck, Cap Capcom? You went backwards? Like, what? You know, so you got to do something similar. I don't think they need more money. I don't even know if they need this much, to be honest. Yeah, Gotchkin's Capcom Cup champion. So Shar also no, sta no uh, stranger to big stages, though. Both them UO finalists, Capcom Cup champ status, right? So they know what they're doing up here. Yeah, her mid range is extremely, extremely good. Rashid's neutral is good, but I don't think it's the best for initiating generally. My experience when I played Rashid also was that Chun Li felt very good against him. Well, because Kiko can slow, you can get the run start up and then dash up under it. I was just very surprised because of the spacing involved. I want to see how Gatchikan forces Lashar to try and parry or even try and force. Word, yeah, he does it a punch. He's always struggling. He's always trying to react to an airborne. You know, yeah, Lashar is very, is, like, kind of I think he's the person the that has the best parry mind game so far in the top to game. Besides Chris yeah, Wong. That's what I was going to mention as well. The like, he's cool. very good at just threatening parry on defense and being like, what up? What you going to do about this? And a perfect parry stays in front. Yeah, Someone did a tech video on that, and he's going to interrupt with a level two. And that could be the round. Yeah. Damn. And even if it didn't kill, did not get a lot of uh, not get a lot of play there, huh? I think it's tough. I mean, honestly, to establish a neutral against Chun Li, particularly world class players, is really difficult. Yeah. Guess is right. Doesn't bait on the throw. Nice. Okay. Got a little bit of drive gauge. Got the corner, but not much else off the level two. Honestly, as far as Rashid level twos go, that was pretty pretty like best case scenario. Doesn't get much better than that. And I almost got him. He could have actually punished that, I think, actually. Can, or, like, try to challenge it with a DI or something. Challenge it, yes, with a DI. Punish it, I don't think so. Okay, just holding the parry there as well. Probably waiting for a jump, but a drive rush cancels the force. The scenario takes the grab because he gets some drive gauge back as he's knocked down. But what a I'm his day one, Rashid, one level two. The, the one that was a block infinite? Yeah. I mean, it's funny that it's not that much weaker now. <laughs> like, it's really strong still, right? Like, it's funny that, um, 
when that happened, there was people, I won't say who, but someone did say, like, you know, I don't even know if they need to change it. Listen, he has to be meticulous with his spacing. If he's fixed it and I'm trying to whip punish that button, I don't agree with it, but he can do, but he's got to use other normals instead. Maybe Actually, it's, what is it, like seven frames? No, it's like eight. It's eight? Okay. I was going to say, if anything, it compensates with, like, the, the startup being a little bit quicker. Oh, nice. It's a dry rush cancel there, and he's going to set up an overhead, maybe? I like that little fake out, try to bait the throw. This is what I mean. You can't, you can't keep trying to resort to that. Right, the button challenge there. The amber on the drive gauge. Hasn't risked the jump yet either because Lachelle's been throwing out some dangerous Kokokins, but people haven't been jumping them. He's probably. Oh, wow. oh man. It's a very good button in neutral, by the way. Oh, this Goshkin outfit is definitely green. Yeah. Well. What call it is, is that supposed to be? Oh, he's... I don't know. Dealing with Rashid and Burnout is really hard, by the way. I think he's one of the characters that is the most... Ah, uh, he tried. The most frustrating to deal with when you're in Burnout, for sure. Oh, nice. Okay, he didn't He didn't save the meter. He just spent it. I don't know if there's a better combo there that could do more damage to get to level 1. It could have been muscle memory to DI and he forgot, but he was perhaps, perhaps I, I love the person that said James Chen just saying random words on the mic. James Chen's not on commentary. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Gets rid of some of the uh, drive gauge and then Chun-Li builds up, up a bunch too. Her level 2 is really good for that, actually. It's one of the few ones where uh, she gets that time. Oh, out of there. Side swap is really good. I think having a side swap level 1 is very privileged, for sure. Oh, he did that to set up level 2. I like that. Oh. That was really smart. Gotchkin did uh, the heavy mixer there so that he could backdash and set up the level 2. Because like if he did a combo into the corner... Then level two is not as scary, right? So that was really smart. Oh, he's out. He didn't get a side swap though, so it could have been worse. Plus, yeah, Lashar probably trying to hold up there. Oh, nice! Wow, Goshkin had a good bail out there. Scary. That roll is very scary because he can do the flip and then do medium punch immediate or do the oh punish. Oh no, no. he tried to get the right punish. It's it's minus four because he's in burnout. Oh, he should be dead here. At Ex DP. Nice. Very close. Lashar, man, I, he's kind of getting robbed in some of these rounds, huh? Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that looks like an accident, too. Lay overhead, medium target combo. Mm, I like it. Oh, my. Nicely done, dude. Lashar. Very clean. Ooh, steals a throw. He has level two, yep. Nice challenge. And he doesn't need to spend any super. That's a huge win for him. Because you know as soon as he gets a hit with Chani spending level 2 here. Ah, oh, and I like Gajkin playing slow because of it. He knows Lashar wants to walk up trying to find a hit. Find that level 2. Empty low, yeah. Gajkin's already almost on level 2. Oh, scary. Goshkin's drive gauge is a real problem here. But that forced a jump from Lashar. He's He tried to pursue. Oh, he could have killed. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Goshkin could have killed him. Oh, my God. We already know what time it is. 
soul ten ronka the damage significant Gosh, man sitting on two bars as well man Gosh, couldn't could have killed him and now he's in the corner and he can't get drive impact that he's gonna go off the wall arabian sky high he's out <gasps> damn to me it looked like he prioritized saving your saw to turn this around because if he gets up with super rashid kick it would have been much more difficult to come back in this run but it's 2-1 here to Lashar. Whoever leaves this or loses this, they go home, man. You don't think it would have hit for too much damage to possibly kill Lashar in that moment? Nah, he, he probably still would have been alive, but... He oh, get scary bet. He's even a button first, right? I don't think it was right off the raw dry, dry rush. What a time to counter hit, too. Please say Lashar is locked in. He does look locked in. Nice punish counter combo. But he's still getting a lovely conversion here and he should set up a safe jump. That's so deep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gotchkin has a big chance here. Oh, oh, double rush. Level one, right? Uh, actually, I think I think that's correct. I think level two... Uh, I think level two is probably necessary. I don't think level one would have killed. From that point... The dark horse continuing his reign, whether it was on the winner, winner side, now on the loser side. The former Capcom Cup. Yeah, if you're ever not sure, just spend it. Oh, he tried to fake out into the throw there, I think. Eagle spike, not set up anything. Try to get a mix up there. You do go behind the opponents if it's on quick rise with that flip. Three Level two. He's got to set up a whirlwind. He's got to push him to the corner as well. He has to. And he's got to use it. He's got to use it now. Oh my! Huge. That is so big. The XZP. He's got to do the whole thing and he's no, he missed. So difficult to get that link is really tight to do the jump down heavy bunch off that and get the one hit. God's good with the full composure and the presence of mind to get the throw against the shot. That was very difficult there to get that tight link with the air down medium punch. But another whiff punish I've been talking oh. about the whole time. He can't try and contest. Yeah, the link is the really tight. Oh no. This is Song Ten Ranka territory. The damage significant again. I was gonna go. I was gonna do the whole line. I mean, I wouldn't owe these spinning mixes to get out here for you. You gotta wait. Yeah, you gotta wait. Rashid gets it back for you. We got level two again. Do it again, all again, baby. Oh, that's huge. Still there. It's still there. He's gonna kick it in, maybe. Oh. Kick it away. He might be able to bait something, but he goes for an overhead instead. Ho, ho, ho. He did crouching medium kick on that. Oh my. Oh my. Lashar whiffed that whole universe and Goshkin didn't respond. Oh my. Level one? I don't think it's enough, right? It is. Oh my god. That did so much. We spoke about this before. Readjust your spacing. You might have to use Holy shit. 2-2? Two, two? Plus $90,000? Alright, now they both look locked in. Oh, nice bait. Honestly, I think Lashar's reactions on the anti-air are so fast that using anti-air anti moves like that, like things that bait the up kicks, is really good. It's the same thing Uma did to him with the, up, the um, dive kick, right? Oh, this is a really hard spot for Lashar. Because he, he's close to being able to just... Oh, my God. That was so smart. That was so smart, dude. I don't even think I've seen a Rashid player do that. Have you guys ever seen a Rashid player do that? I don't think I have. Ooh, a little too far for the length, but... Yeah, because why would you ever need to do DI when you have the whirlwind out? You know what I mean? Like it's so powerful that you don't need to, right? My God! He tried to walk backwards. The burnout is there. It could be there. Oh, Goshkin's about to burn him. That's a huge throw for Lashar. It might have saved the round. Well, now he's burnt. Wow, the mix-up. He can just reset DI, maybe. He's playing it safe at the moment, and that is going to be 
Damn. That was a tough, tough W for Gotchkin to grind out. He worked his ass off for that. 100k at least. Turn the stream off. The JP theme. Rashid deliver us from these top tiers. I have bad news about the power level of Rashid. I think one thing is I want to do more post streams for tournaments whenever I'm not there. Usually I'm always like, hey, you know, this tournament's happening this weekend. Go check it out. I'll see it all. We'll watch it together Monday. But I think I'm going to do more, more co-streaming for tournaments and stuff. Like this year for CPT, especially if they do a lot of online stuff again, I'll probably do more co-streaming. Is that real money or is that their fake made up bison bucks? Probably bison bucks, right? Oh, you're a Say Jam fan now? A hundred dollars just fell out. And Guys, I have a croissant. And I'm, I was deciding if I wanted to eat it before this top four or not. And I think it's going to be my victory croissant. Winner's final. It's very likely the person who wins this wins one million dollars. Pretty wild. Whatever, everybody. Thanks for the sub. Man, this vote is neck and neck. Uma's been playing really well. I generally think that this matchup is uh, Luke favored. This is a Luke favored matchup most of the time. Because even when she throws fireballs, Luke can throw a fireball at her, punish counter her, and then she follows behind, but he gets more drive gauge than her. So it generally tends to be favorable for Luke and that interaction. And then in general, he just has great pokes, great ways to stuff drive rush, like, you know, just lots of good stuff. Nope, just hit one jab, waited. Oh, you're a Say Jam fan now? Oh, nice. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Oh, that's a combo drop. Oh, did you see Chris Wong's face? Uh-oh. Oh, you're a Say Jam fan now. Oh. He's not happy about that. That's a drop. I mean... I mean... Uh-oh. Not like this. Oh, you're a Say Jam fan now? Uh-oh. What country is TW? I feel like you can get there. Oh, nice block and punish. Oh, eh, not the best punish. Thailand? It's not Thailand and it's not Taiwan. Oh my. He's locked in. That reaction was unreal. 20 C, he's oh, from the US. Wow! If that was EX, so I guess he can't because he's in burnout. Yeah, nice. Oh, you're a Say Jam fan now? Nicely done. Taiwan? Yeah, are people scared to say Taiwan? I could say Taiwan. Oh, nice whip punish from Uma. Man, it's really funny. You know, this jury character, people talk about her, like, so much of the season about not being very good. Like, I don't know. It's just really funny to me to see her in winner's finals of Capcom Cup after people are like, eh, she's not so good. You know. Yeah, it says Hong Kong and Taiwan. Yeah, people think that she's, she's all right. Like, you know, not as strong as the Luke Ken, JP, Chun Li, DJ kind of characters, right? But you know, she's very solid. Oh. Oh, you're a Sage That's big. Oh. He has level two, but I don't think it kills. So. Yeah, it sucks that Chris Wong couldn't find a good find a good way to spend any meter there. Oh, Chip is getting nice with the fireball. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Ah. Uh, I had a feeling. I was like, oh man. Dude, is Jury gonna win Capcom Cup? That'd be really funny given she was so strong in like the first two tournaments of the game. And then everybody was like, nah, man. She is not it. And then now, like, here we are. Oh, 
Fireball. Hasn't been the bane of his existence, but it's played an integral part thus far. Speaking of which, back to back punish counters from Uma, making the right choices. The eye wash black. Big damage here for Chris Wong. If the grand finals is Jury versus Rashid, I would be dying laughing. He's going to change up the option. Takes the grand final. Also checking with the heavy punch in case Chris Wong. Wow, how does he do that so often? He just perfect parries random buttons so often. He even do that what he was doing against DCQ before, and he tried. Oh, accident, but we'll take it. But it's totally fine. It put him in a very awkward situation. Now Uma. Chris Wong does get the big punish counter. Tencent Rin close to burnout. He's trying to chase him down. down as well. Yeah, he tried to cover his approach. He's just mashing parry. Yeah, but like it's not like he does it every three seconds. He just like stands there and is like, it's time. And then he perfect parry shit. Like, I don't know. He, he whips sometimes, but like he, he actually does it a lot. It's very impressive how often he just randomly perfect parries a poke. Before he gets that, he's so lucky that connected on the latter act two frames, and it did. No charge on the light flash knuckle. A little bit too close. Yeah, the corner was too close, I think, for him to do it. Anyway, with the light flash knuckle, could have maybe changed it up with an uppercut for the damage, but either way, damage is damage. And speaking of now, Uma. Nice. He tried to advance a little bit. Got to wake up with an option here, and then gets the grab. Uma hasn't done a DP yet, and he's going to actually go under the Nice, yeah. With the super art one, and chase him down because he has to stay Dude. Drive cage. You guys see what I'm talking about? He just has the timing. Like, I don't know. And then you can start trying to like delay and like walk in and throw and do other things like that. But then the problem is he's just going to hit crouching medium punch drive rush. He has to burn himself out with a hooker by crook to get the round. He will do so. And he still preserves his level three. Even down there. Good perfect parry into the surprise throw. Sometimes he does guess parry and whiff, but his success ratio is in absurd. Like it's actually ridiculous. I don't know how he does it. Look, he hasn't parried in so long, right? The level one of that range, you can't humanly react to that. Ooh. Superhuman. Shouts to Nephew for even showing me that. The I first mean, if place. he does it, I feel like I wouldn't be too surprised because he's on the grand stage right now. Well, like, you see what I mean? Like, it's not like he's just randomly pairing a lot. He His success ratio is so high. Like, I, it's very impressive. Nice stuff. Yep. Yeah, he's a beast. I don't know how he does it. He just has like a really good read read on like the rhythm of when people want to press. Even if he makes a defensive choice, it might not work out. Oh, and there you go. Good parry. Perfect response from Uma. Suddenly winnable, actually, though. Like it's hard, but this is winnable. Nice walk on there. Chris Wong had a rough, like honestly, it should be 2 0 Chris Wong. Right? Because he almost won with the level one earlier. So, you know, he, he really could be one game away. Counter hit. Confirms. Stringing him up so he can't jump. Oh my, he almost perfect parried that jab. Oh, he missed the perfect knuckle. I told you, man, everybody misses it. Somebody earlier was like, oh, it's not just me. Every Luke player in the world misses perfect knuckles, always, especially when there's stress on the line. Wow, that's huge. What a call out. He died. It's because he's trying to beat throws, but I mean, you'll take it as an air to air, too. Had the intuition to maybe neutral jump, gets blown up for it. But I think he was actually still looking for a throw stubbornly. Yeah, and it just worked out. Oh, a drive impact against Chris Wong sequence. He's gonna strip that drive gauge. He can combo into DI. Yeah, there it is. String him up, man. One, if he doesn't get this wrong. Good block on the open. Yeah, uh huh. Uma smothering. Oh, huge. That backdash might have saved Chris Wong's life. Nice juggle, man. He saw the, the fireball hitting and was like, oh, cool. And then, man, he was ready. Oh, the, the defense. Oh, whip punish. <gasps> that was scary. If Chris Wong hit him and he got heavy punch, like level three confirm from heavy knuckle or something, I mean, holy shit. Jury is one game away from grand finals. Like, what the fuck? He rematches. There's a plethora of options. Maybe a treasure trove. Who knows? Maybe not in California. I know the rent's high here, but. We can talk about that medium later. Anyways. Oh. 
backs away and then a perfect parry there and gets the delayed crouching medium punch and he will flash knuckle his way to the corner I don't know, man. I, I that he didn't try and check Uma's playing really well. I, that, the looks on Uma's face when he makes mistakes, uh, mistakes, and like does the right thing too. He looks really uh, composed. Like Chris Wong had that drop or that 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 uh, weird level one trade earlier, and he looks so sad. <laughs> Which I mean, I don't blame him. I'm not. I'm not holding it against him, but it's hard to be composed, you know. He's just doing his thing. Honestly, I will say too, one thing that I think is very interesting is that there's probably a lower... Oh, he's just going to string... Oh, he wanted to burn out. Oh, they're both burnt. She's going to level 2 on block though. On the fireball here. <gasps> Dive kick would have got him over. Holy shit. He's very close to chip. Yeah. Nicely done. Very smart from Chris Wong. I was going to say, we see that the loot drops, the knuckles and stuff are a factor for sure. I think Jury, one thing about her for sure is that she can play a more kind of like, I run my cool stuff and just do a game plan. And when there's this much stress on the line, that probably helps, honestly. Oh, Oh, he's got to give up that space because of the fireball. Man, Uma got so much ground. I love that Chris Wong played that slow, though. He doesn't need to commit here. He wins in one hit, right? So just walk back, play it slow. Oh, nicely done. Easy peasy, game five. The winner of this game is very likely to make a million dollars. Like, th this game is the game. Like, I I mean, you know, Winter's High Grand Finals is a huge advantage, so. Yeah, the punish was slightly too slow. Nice. Clean stuff. Oh, he tried suppressor on Wake Up. Wow. I love the spaced out pressure from Uma. Not over committing, not dashing into the corner. Uh oh. He never side switches. He always takes the corner push. I noticed that. That's something about Chris Wong that I find that's pretty interesting. He he very rarely does the side swap. He almost always just takes corner carry, push to the other corner, the extra damage. Oh man. Okay, burns himself. Yeah, but Chris Wong needs to press. His DI there was plus also. DI is minus three on block, but in burnouts plus one. Ah, what the surprise. Regular. Sometimes you forget people can dash on this game because they're so busy drive rushing. Huge opening. Wake up buttons. Honestly, waking up DP for a million is one thing, but I think waking up fucking jab is way scarier. Would you mash jab on wake up for a million dollars? I would rather DP. Straight up, I'm on. There's no planet where I'm brave enough to mash jab versus DP. I would happily DP before I mash jab. Straight up. Oh man. Looking good. Looking good. Last round. Huge, huge advantage to Uma, by the way. Oh, the off. I love Chris Wong's. Oh, man. I love that he chased. Oh, he didn't get the perfect knuckle. I don't think he realized. But I love that he went in with offense. Oh, huge. Man, that was a huge whip. Scrambly, man. Uh, because Chris Wong plays so patient. So him him representing offense early in the round was a big surprise for Uma, I'm sure. Oh, man. Drive reversal out. That's a lot of drive gauge. But it does get rid of the level two. Uh-oh. He's about to be burnt. Huge. He dropped the knuckle again. Oh, man. Oh, man. That flat. Oh, man. <gasps> Uppercut. Holy. Does he risk the DP? He does. He woke up buttons. He burnt himself. Oh, boy. 
Buffering. Buffering. He's waiting for a level one from her. Oh, he didn't level one the drive rush. He needs to keep him close. He can't throw him again unless it's in the corner. Ah. Oh, my. No anti air. Uma will not tech. Holy shit. His defense. All right. Chris Wong's good, though. He's chilling. He's chilling. He's chilling. Wow. That's huge. Level two. Wait, he can push him to the corner? He has to play it safe and go for the safe jump. Do not try any gimmick. Just do the safe jump, please. String him up. Oh, my God. He blocked the fuzzy, but he... Oh, he's not dead. He blocked. Super... He's chipped. Holy shit. Uma. Oh, my God. That is unreal. Wow, what the blocks, though? Fuck, Chris Wong blocked the fuzzy. And then he still died. Oh, man, that spot was... Yeah, he was fighting for his fucking life out there. Uma Jury. Winner side grand finals. At worst, $300,000. This final so far has been really fun to watch. Man, this tournament's tight. Pat the bed. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dude, I'm distracted. I'm just... Man. Gotchkun has to beat NL, then beat the person he beat in Grand Finals of Singapore, then fight Uma if he wants to make it to this army of Luke's. Yeah, that's true, I guess. NL beat Chris Wong to qualify, and then Gotchkun beat Chris Wong to qualify. And then Chris Wong had to go to France to qualify. So these are the people who beat up Chris Wong and stopped him from making it to Capcom Cup originally. That is hilarious. I love that everybody's voting for Gotchkun, not because they think he'll win, but because they want him to win. Yeah, the biggest factor in this matchup is Luke's ability to slow down Rashid's drive rush and approach with crouching medium, and then his air approach option being so strong against the anti-air. What up, Goonzy? With his presence and his determination to get closer and closer to the grand finals but he already opens things up with a forward medium punch conversion into eagles yeah that is guaranteed but you trade the resources like if you do fully charged whirlwind shot like that you can um just just let them dp you and eat it and it just costs two bars for them Oh. Speaking of which, when you see Gotchkun committing to the fireball game, NL two steps ahead, already airborne. The counter hit is there for a crouching medium punch. Again, punish counter, but no spinach of the bar, surprisingly. Jump in script. When he spends the bar, he heard your cries, he heard your pleads, vicious, and he said, listen, let me slam dunk and get that round. Making him there. With the eagle spike and then a back jump there but gets caught with the heavy good call out he oh he tried to beat the dp else. there great patience there from nl that's one angle nl has already stuffed out let's see if he can continue on doing so got to level two is that the plan oh he had the hit that sucks he was trying to he was committed to a bait trying to bait the throw or something just for a little bit and you're gonna stand in medium punch after that here he comes Mm -hmm. At worst, he's getting a burn out here, right? So. Oh, and he did a delayed button, and he still gets the pick up. Wins there. Oh, he's done. That's it. Yeah, he's done. The axe. No. He didn't even go for it. He went for the regular heavy mixer. Expensive at that, but he's more than willing to spend those two bars every single time. Shout out to the lingering wins. We don't need no silfie here. You've got yourself to do the work. Right, rushes in again. It looks like that's going to be the way he's going to approach. Yeah. Whipping the tackle from um, uh, Luke is on purpose, yes. Battle, you might as well integrate the drive rush footsies as well. And it's not too bad. It's not too expensive to even try out that strategy. Going to the low two times over and forcing them to react to it. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't spend the X because you just had full drive gauge anyway. So why not just spend it? Ooh. Every time Rashid anti-airs this character and it works, I'm just waiting for it not to work. You know what I mean? Yeah, you whip the tackle on purpose from Luke because it gives you a knockdown. You get, you get the okay. Yeah, he needs to try and keep his dry gauge low, and then he's going to do the Yassar to help close the gap. Just walk in on it. No drive reversal because the drive reversal will be bad at this point. Gets the oh, that's brutal. EX? Is he going to go for the tight link? I think he will. There it is. Wow, he hit the tough link. Fake out. Goes for the throw. <gasps> that's huge damage. Nice find, man. That was very scary. 
not that impatient in scenarios like that, Gachikun. So he takes one game up. No, oh, nice empty jump from NL. Very patient. Oh, he missed it. Hey, but not too bad for Gachikun. He didn't get the uh, the rest of that damage, but NL had dropped that light knuckle combo again. I mean, listen, what that does to his mental fatigue, <laughs> that's annoying for any Rashid player. Oh man. Alright, I like it. NL has seen that Gotchkin's trying to bait and be tricky on offense a lot, so I think it's good to just snap out crushing medium kick like that. I like the confidence to so just commit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Good for Meno. I think he recognized that Gachikun has to be more respectful of his options than than the reverse, right? So he's down to just swing. Yeah, well, actually, NL started top 16 in losers. Gachikun did not. So NL has had to play a lot. Actually, he's had to play more. Okay, I like this. Spend the bar. Oh, it was a fake. Ah, uh, that's big. If, if honestly, if you're Goshkun though, this round is still looking your favor. So you know. Oh. That's a good punish. No meter left from NL, though. If this goes to the dis... Like, first of all, it's very winnable for NL, but if this goes to another round, yeah, now suddenly Goshkin's spot looks much better. Uh, I think he got a little too antsy, right? He just... He wanted to move a little too soon. He lost all of his bar. And Goshkin's gonna have a level two pretty quick here, you know? There it is. Hit into the corner. He does some offense. The second he gets pushed away, like level two is going to be a threat, right? So nice punish. Yep. Now he has it. So if he ever loses this corner. Nice. Didn't go for a big punish, though. Oh, and he committed. He's going to double drive rush. Level three. Easy peasy. Gosh, good and playing real clean. And we're gonna make it 2 0. Picture perfect. Literally ending with the perfect KO. Red yeah, the difference between all of these matches are $100,000. What a suspended. Thanks for the prime. Oh, my. Oh! Oh! It's stuffed it. Oh. You hate to see it. It's stuffed the heavy mixer. Gotchakun tried to anti air dot PNG. Okay, listen, Gotchakun. If if you can understand me and speak English and hear my thoughts right now, I'm so sorry that happened to you, but you gotta lock in and relax, okay? I'm sorry that happened to you, but don't die after that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay steady. Stay steady. You got this. You got. What? I have no impact on the match chat. I'm not there. No, I'm, I'm down for Gashkun to win. I want Gashkun to win. And then after that, whoever wins between Chris Wong, Gashkun, and Uma, that's, you know, I'm happy for them. Yeah, look at the damage on this, bro. If he gets the hard link, I think he could have killed, maybe. It's hard to do, it's very difficult. I understand it's very inconsistent sometimes. Oh, Oh no. Does he EX? Does not. Very nice. Chip's a big problem now. Ah! Level one back? Oh, he's already committed to the button. He's already crashing medium kicking. I'm not even sure if he could have challenged with his own level one just to escape the scenario. And then he's full screen. Curse of Sage Am? Literally. Giving some, giving some tips. 
Why would Sejam do this? It's if if Gajkun tweeted, yo, I am stupidly locked in right now. Like it's actually unreal. Then that would be on him. Right? That would be on him. But I didn't say any of that. I just said that he's he's looking good. Like, I don't know. I just said Gajkun's looking good. He's looking good. NL's looking good too. But Gajkun's looking good too. You know, I like the way he's playing. I am dummy locked in right now. Perfect parry. This is what he's looking for. If he's not going to take the risk with the jump, he needs the perfect parry and close the gap. That's all. Oh, he is not locked in, by the way. He is. He's locked out. <laughs> His ass is locked out. That's not good at all. Oh, level two. And he's trying to back away. And I think NL knows it. That's why he's keeping in Vulcan Blocks range. Do not use the level one. Yes. He can bait the level one. Oh, he's going to just string him up here. Oh, there's a throw. What's it going to be? Oh, oh my. Yeah. Okay. He landed on him. NL winces back in his chair. Gatikun. Nice and calm. After that W, very fortuitous. That was an executive decision because it was a low-hanging fruit there with the DI, but he had other plans. Yeah, if he, the problem with DIing is that he didn't have the life to absorb anything, so it wouldn't have probably worked. Wow, word. I don't think so, no. Yeah, too slow. That is a huge loss for NL. Yeah, I mean he's he's dead. He's fucked. I don't. I yeah. I don't. I I don't believe in his chances. He spent too much bar. Like Goshkin's gonna level two him. Yeah, level two. Yeah. No, I mean I'm not cursing Goshkin. I'm telling you he lost that NL lost this round. There's no there's no curse. I'm telling you that cost him the game. Yeah, that that's too big of a drop to come back from. Even if he won the round, like the uh, the meter disadvantage is too important. Curse lifted. You guys don't realize that I just tell you what's gonna happen because I know what's gonna happen. There's no curse or anything. I just watch and play this game, and I know what's gonna happen. Gotchkun defeats NL. Gotchkun versus Chris Wong loses finals. Which, by the way, this was grand finals of the Singapore offline premiere, the tournament that I commentated with the Ibs to qualify Gajkun for Capcom Cup, by the way. This is a rerun of that. Winner plays Uma in winner's side. Uma, who has been dominating ICFC online the entire season. Yeah, I mean, if Gajkun wins the tournament, that will make him the second person to be a two-time Capcom Cup champion, which is a pretty wild trophy to have. Like he's pretty far away still. He has to win a bunch of hard matches. When does Daigo play? Any minute. Any minute, I think. He's just grabbing some pagoda. Your star in bio, yeah. Ah. Oh, they played a different theme. Champion, they'll be awarded a million dollars. This motherfucker said Dale because people keep saying he looks like Pitbull. All right, rerun. This is the Singapore Premier Offline Grand Finals rerun. Chris Wong with the Soju cam. Can't even see his fucking head. Oh, there we go. Here we go. It's losers finals. Chris Wong versus Gatikun game one. Chris Wong might play this a little bit different as opposed to what NL was doing there. He might walk in that Nicely done. The cancel. So Gatchikin's button choices up oh, predictions. are going to be significant and already pops out an OD spinning mixer, but the overhead gets checked on. Rising uppercut. That, that is a uh, real bad day for Gatchikin so far. Oh no. Easy peasy round for Chris Wong. The hammer of Don Anya. Drop the hammer. Level two time. We nice block. The bait. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, nice. I think he's just gonna clock him and kill him. 
Wow. It's close. It's gotta be. It's already passed. He's already been in the yellow. It's past 50% of the drive gauge. It's time to go to Memphis yet again. Damn. That should hurt. Game one to Chris Wong. He's definitely got to be careful with his button choices. Up close at the mediums, he's ready. When he moves himself out of range, he wants to stand roundhouse, especially the stand Yeah, I did a lot. I'm, I can't lie. Chris Wong looks locked in. Super scary to play that game with. I'm I am foreseeing a Chris Wong beats Goshkun, then resets and beats Uma. I'm for I'm foretelling a dangerous tale. Adjusting that spacing, micro steps are necessary. So we building that gauge back from both ends. Chris Wong steadily creeping up. Goshkun, yeah, he sees the crouching medium punches backing away. The suppressor, they took whatever counter hit poke. No. Excuse me, that Goshkun wanted to get out. Where's the drops? Fireball into the upper. Still dealing with it, gets it to late throw. Ah, uh, unfortunate. Well, the timing right there for Chris Wong. Love the side swap. Oh, he's under, and he's out. Good awareness from Gotchkin to just throw that fireball and check him after him. Nice. Sore. The thing is, is that as soon as Gotchkin has level two, this round potentially gets spooky if he lives long enough. Oh, he should be able to kill. Double drive. Nice. Yeah, Gotchkin's good at this matchup for sure too. And when the first time they played, I think Rashid was like a much more of a newer factor than he is now, where Chris Wong is far more likely to have more matchup experience. That's the only button he really needs to use against Rashid. Still set, and he gets the throw bait here, so how is Gatchikin going to respond? Nice check. Big. Oh, wrong punish. He had to do medium, maybe. He should super. Okay. will do that with Altair. We'll burn him out. That means he's got no level two, but that's fine because he's actually in a highly beneficial scenario here near the corner. Burn him out. Mad plus. Oh, he just did it. He can wait. Exdp. Not enough, right? It's enough. Oh my, that did a shit ton. I did not think that that would be enough. I thought it was like a pixel. Is it just me or does Gotchkin luck locked in? I think Chris Wong looks locked in, and I think Gotchkun looks locked in. I think they both are looking sharp. Oh, it's... No, that's not the right answer. That's a big deal, too. Media Arabian Cyclone also pretty good. Try to challenge the arm, the uh, what's it called? The wake up. Oh, yeah, he can jab link. He can extend with drive rush. Unfortunate for Chris Wong there. Like he he tried to be cautious on his own offense, and then look where it ended up. Nice, good confirm from Gotchkun. He got punished counter crouching medium kick. I like him spinning the meter. Got a gas. Nice block. Yep, forced him off the drive gauge. It's really good for Gachi to spend it like that too, because he gets a ton of drive gauge off of it, and he's gonna build another level two. So even though Chris Wong spends this, Gachi's likely to build another level two in this very round, and then he can build even more and spend another level two in the next round, maybe. So. Oh my. Yeah, I was gonna say that's definitely not gonna punish. Look, Gachi's gonna have another level two. Like, as soon as, like, he needs one interaction here, and now he can just run away in level two. That's why Chris Wong's trying to chase him, by the way, because he wants to stop this. Yeah. Having an install level two like this is so powerful because of interactions like this. Okay. It's gone now. Oh. Oh, huge. Level one. Bada bada bada. Bah. Surviving for the rest of this game, tying up one round apiece. One game apiece, and there it is. The magic button. Watch media punch getting the big punish counter in the corner. You go, Gotchkun. Wow, he woke up jab. Oh, he had him twice. He didn't believe, though. Not as 
intimidated by Chris Wong's presence in the corner. He was staggering it, hoping Chris Wong would block and then try to open him up with something later. But oh, you're a Sejam fan now? Damage, not a problem. Oh Still my, he, he maybe could have got a trade combo off that if it was a different normal that Luca. Still being persistent with that crouch medium. One more medium attack cancel should do the trick. No stuff. Oh, he is chilling. Goshkun just dancing on him. Lovely whip punish though from Chris Wong. Bam. He, I gotta say, Chris Wong is very, very, very sharp in these like little interactions in neutral. His patience is really good, but he's also really good at just being like, all right, it's offense time. And he just overwhelms people because his patience is so extreme that when he chooses to attack you, you're like, oh, fuck. Uh, and you're just kind of not ready for it. I need you to tone it down. Chris Wong up one game against Gacha Kun. See if he starts here again. Hopefully he's not super deterred by what's happened in the neutral when he's with buttons and so on and so forth. He's tried overheads as well, but Chris Wong just being... Oh, my. That always scares me. I'm always afraid Rashid's just dead. Mid -range game. <laughs> nice. I'm telling you, he has such a great understanding. Good confidence and matchup. Mm -hmm. He can side swap. Nope, just takes the corner carry. Media overhead. Yeah, that setup, he can like do dash low or overhead. They look kind of similar or dash throw. Like he has, he has some good options. Rashid has lots of media overhead setups, which is cool. And this is what's interesting about Chris Wong. He'll try and walk forward and perfect parry the whirlwind shots instead of jumping. Because that's the low risk and it can actually turn into a high reward. In terms of positioning anyway. Still can't whiff a button. Speaking of positioning, Gachakun is trying to still keep... Man, they're just chilling. Oh. A dry rush perhaps, but he's not going to be whipping any buttons soon. He paid for it. I mean, the big thing for Chris Wong is he doesn't need to initiate. And the longer this round goes, the more likely Gotchkin builds level 2, right? So if you don't connect and trade fireballs and stuff and you threaten things, you can't let Gotchkin build the meter. Ah, uh, he should be able to kill here. Okay. Yeah, he could have gotten a kill without it. This is, uh, you know, slightly more nerve-wracking for them, so it's easy to do that. Nice. Man. Out of there. Tempest Moon? I know. It's made up, man. Don't worry about it. No one knows what that is. Yeah, a little two-piece. Rashid Heavy Kick's a really good poke. It's quite committal, obviously, right? But it's a really solid move. And the reward on it's good. And you saw it, yeah. Gotchiku tried to press the button on the way down. Chris Wong in the ring with the fierce. No stagger. He's, he's walking back and forth. Yeah, Gotchiku is absolutely not biting. That's the second time, the second instance he's caught. Yeah, I like dash throw. He threatened the, he did the overhead setup last time. Oh, he tried perfect parry. Level two. Yasar in bio. Better seek shelter. Category five. Oh, he tried to throw. Uh oh, he he doesn't have any more of the. Oh, he jumped right. No, he throw. Ah. Uh. When he nodded, I thought that he was blocking. But he hit him with the nod, like, all right, you got me. I mean, yeah, Rashid will build a level two in seconds here. Yeah, it's not going to take him that long. Defensive choices and knowing what high level players want to do at specific situations has been phenomenal. Yeah, he's got level two. Although you don't really want to spend it with your back to the wall. Here's fine. Yeah, he's going to level two now. This this super is so fucking good, man. I mean, I'm sure all of you see it, but it is really funny how good this super is. Nice. He got a lot of he got a lot of damage off of it. Uh, out of there. But Gotchkin has huge meter advantage. Ah, uh, nice. 2-2? Two, two? Last game? Man, Gotchkin's neutral is very good. It's it's super easy to just whiff and die to this character Luke. Or for him to just force jumps and die. Like to play at this high level and slow down this character is not easy. This, this shit is a pain in the ass, so. I wonder why. Strange, isn't it? With this much on the line, I really don't blame them. Interesting. 
from earlier on in top 16, there was plenty of rematches instantly, but they know what they're doing. Oh, oh boy, that's a man, game. that hurts. Combo there for Chris Wong, and he will flash knuckle his way to the corner once again, and he beat a delayed button. Jumps away. Man, that range is so scary. Yeah, I like the throw. You can just late tech there if you're afraid of uh, safe jump or throw, but then obviously it's susceptible to low. Crouching medium punch in bio? So true. Oh, couldn't get the punish in time. Nice counter poke. One round away from being in the grand final, but what a check. Gosh, Goon, one interaction from building level two, by the way. Oh, no. He just did it. Chris Wong said, crouching medium, crouching medium, crouching medium. Yasar is available. Nice interrupt. He's trying to force a little too much. Level three. And he will save himself. Huge advantage for Chris Wong. It's not going to get confiscated yet, but Gatchikin. I don't know. I, yeah, Gashigun's chance of winning here is really low. Ah, there we go. Nicely done. Well, well, well. Chris Wong versus Uma. The rerun. Oh, you guys got to say give it up to Gotchkin while he's on the stage. No, he's leaving. $700,000 money match up next. Somebody's about to win $300,000 and someone's about to win $700,000 more than that. What do we guys think? Oh, it's a lot of people voting for Uma. Uma does have winner side of advantage, but Chris Wong, I don't know. He's kind of fucking different, to be honest. Some people like Rand and James, they had the op they had the observation on deck. They had the luxury of being able to tune into the Asia scene, but this is where... Hey, I picked Uma too. At the record show in losers and safe in winners. They both made top eight. You know, every European I predicted to make it out of groups besides Phenom died. Never ever voting for Europe again. Yeah, I have been live for like a while. My brain is a little fried. You know, the funny thing is I had a meeting right before this too for the Tekken event. So it was like I did a meeting and then now I've been live from this. So I've been talking for like seven and hours, like seven and a half hours at this point. I will tell you, it was pretty wild to wake up to a DM on Twitter.com that says uh, from Saikuno. Hey, I'd like to play Tekken 8. I'm like, all right, man, that sounds that's weird. Like if you told me that should happen, I would be like, that doesn't sound right. The more dangerous it becomes. So let's see it. Here we go. Did I see FT signifier? Not until I already had all the players. Yeah, it was too, it was too late. The problem is not that we didn't have enough players. The problem is that we had too many. He's going to learn on the fly because he had no real time to think about this. He's had to make that losers run. Run up against difficult opponents. Nice. Holy shit. It's the anti there. Does Uma. Very, very deep uppercut to get to the anti air. Oh my. Thank you. Thank you. The right arm of Exodia. My card has no pathetic moves. Just fucking swinging that shit. Standing heavy punch is the other arm of Exodia. Crouching medium punch is the. Crouching medium kicks the leg of Exodia. Take it away. Doesn't even need to spend any super because a perfect missed the perfect knuckle though. We'll take that first round here in the grand final. We're not doing predictions. We already did. Again, we just run back. You can expect Chris Wong to come in with a different approach. Oh, this is the prediction. A huge error that had to be a little overlap to try to get the uppercut. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He definitely didn't want that for sure, but he will make amends. That's what Chris Wong is excellent at doing when he blunders. Slam blast. Oh shit. Two Capcom Cups in a row, Luke's in grand finals. Does he win two Capcom Cups in a row? Luke is the second. Would he be the first character to be a two time Capcom Cup champion? <laughs> nice, strings his ass up. Good block from Chris. Punish. No, we could have killed him, man. That's not good. Uh, I don't know if he's going to spend level three. He'll spend on the next one. Yeah, there's, he shouldn't spend it there. He should spend it on the next hit. That respectable. Wild stare down there from the two. Uh huh. Drive. I had a feeling it was coming. I was just going to say drive impact. Beautiful parry from Uma. That's what he 
did towards the last end of the first set with, in winners finals against Chris Dude, the fact that he's ready and calm to do that. At Man, um, that is very clutch, by the way. It's a perfect parry like that, not easy. Oh, the very rare drop from Chris Ah, the drops. He might get the burnout. He does secure it. He's gonna string his ass up. Help! Okay, nice. Oh man. Oh, he didn't get a confirm again. Oh, Chris Wong. Okay, spend it. Ah! Low on drive gauge. He's trying nice to block. Away, so he has at least two bars to work with for something, Uma. One drive rush cancel from either of them will do the trick. You see the patience oh. from both ends. That was a little, little scary. Oh, oh, oh. A Double scary drive rush? Chris Wong. He's dead, right? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. That was ugly. He almost died. He almost didn't win that game. such a pivotal thing to use. All right, that's one. Ooh. Shoeless, maidenless. There's a drive impact there, and he's going to go for the jump conversion instead. This is a pretty decent damaging conversion there from Uma. Oh, that's big. Mm-hmm. Frame kill throw. I like that. First hit medium, kick cancel into the Fuha. Oh, clean. Oh, beautiful coverage from Uma. You saw a crouching heavy bunch, anti air, oh, it whiffs. I still have time to recover. Beat air knuckle, right? That way, if he did DP, that probably wouldn't have worked. Really good awareness from him, though. Sandblast. Wow, that Fuha store to beat the fireball. What he dashed in and blocked. That's a wild choice. Oh, punish. <gasps> wow, did you see that? Chris Wong missed his drive rush thing, dash forward, did standing jab, still counter DI. Like he he messed up, and even in the scramble, still counter DI. To block it out and get punished before he had to do that counter di interaction high end risk from above let's see if uma ever Boom. uses that tactic again in the meantime let's take a look at chris wong and the way he's controlling the oh, huh? in the world you react to the huh? last oh he dropped it drop from that uma though beautiful. That was beautiful, sure. okay punish nice i like to throw in case the fireball was a problem he's gonna burn him he should just level three this easy peasy Level two. Down to just burn him out. He didn't do level three there, probably because the link was too. It's too scary. <gasps> he can get all the way out of the corner. Oh, he didn't have a Fuha store. Ah, ah. DP? No. <gasps> Bates the throw. Chris Wong is locked the fuck in. He did the same thing to Gotchkun in Singapore, though. He reset him and then lost. That same thing happened. I could see him resetting and then dying in set two to Uma Jury. No, I don't think that was a bait. I think it was a drop. I mean, this Luke outfit is so bad. It's the worst part about Chris Wong. I love everything else about him. Incredible player. This is the worst thing about him, for sure, is that he uses this Luke outfit. Umas and winners. Oh, uh, okay, okay. No drops. Oh, yeah, he got on. Even more so. Uma with the retaliation on the board. First round of game three. Oh, I like. I like how often he's doing Fuha stores off that. Up you go. Oh, good punish. Although he has to, yeah, he has to DP or air knuckle might have worked, but yeah. He wanted to jump me medium punch air knuckle combo, but the space from the corner was a little weird. 
Uh oh. <gasps> okay. Nice block. Nice. I like it. Keeping it slow and steady. Chris Wong not trying to overcommit. A lot of meter spent there. Very expensive. Oh, he didn't get punished. Yeah, I think Uma's in a good spot to win this round. Wow, word. God damn, how did he see that? Oh, punish. Oh, no. Oh, double no. We're fumbling. We are fumbling. Oh, it, everybody is panicking. Oh my god, Chip. Help. Sam Blast. Oh, he tried to bait the throat. Sam Blast. Ah, nice. Reset. Easy peasy 3 0. I gotta tell you, man. Chris Wong. Pretty good at this game. Pretty unstoppable looking. Final three games? Maybe. If he 3 0s them. I mean, they're both playing for so much. Like, not like sure, the money is wild, right? But also, playing at Capcom Cup, even when there wasn't a million dollars on the line, is very nerve wracking. You know, this is this is for the first Capcom Cup champion for this game, right? That's a huge win. The money is unbelievable, but to be Capcom Cup champion is a big deal too. <gasps> what a choice. That's a good idea. I like that because so many people, when you jump back from them, autopilot and throw fireball. Nice. Nah, Uma's like, nah, bro. It's it's 10 p.m. at night. I'm going to start drive impacting your ass. Like, he, he looked at the clock and was like, all right, it's time, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to DI your ass to kingdom come. Mm -hmm. He whiffed, and then he tried to parry after, and Uma just walks up for the throw, reading it. Oh, beautiful walk on her. I love it. I love the patience. Chris Wong is really patient. Like, he's... Maybe to a fault occasionally, but man, his his patience in neutral is incredibly good. Yeah, he just blocks it out. Chris Wong chilling. I like the fake from Uma on the drive rush stop just to see what he's doing, see if he'll super or do something. Hmm. His time. It's his time to. It's his time to press a little bit. She has less drive gauge. Now that she has more than three, though, Chris Wong backed up. You notice that? As soon as she got more drive gauge, he was like, "All right, cool. I should probably back up and respect this." Ooh, keeps it so safe. Oh. Twelve seconds. They they both have to act. I feel like Uma's gonna jump at him. In neutral. Oh my. <gasps> oh my god. He's definitely got it now. Yeah, there's no way for Chris Wong to lose there. He just blocks, and there's nothing Uma can do after that. Even if there was like a little bit more time. Ooh. No DP. Man, the nerves. There's a lot going on here. And also, Uma could commit to something, I suppose. Uh-oh. I like it. Just in case there was parry. Also scary. Oh, that's a reset. It's also scary because, man, Chris Wong's light bar just got fucking obliterated. He's buffering in case she throws level 3. Or a fireball, so he could level three rather. Not going for the rising up of Antia there, and he's just gonna hold it down here, Uma. 
He's got to be very careful. Ooh, that could have oh my well. god, that whiff could have cost Uma the round. It's that that kind of a whiff at this point. His damage output. I do not want to deal with the Chris Wong with low vitality. He is the fucking best. Are you serious? If, I mean, if he whiffs there, he's like, it's it. Like, I mean, that is an absurd amount of knowledge to know that he could do that from that far. And of course, having the hurt box on the Sand Blaster. It worked out for Uma there. One nil in this grand final reset. How did he know, man? I have no idea how that reached. Round there, safe on block. Away again, hits him with the forward fist. He might have to utilize that a little bit more in the neutral to kind of get Chris Wong to think about the oh. buttons to use. Good trade for Luke whenever that happens. Oh, man. Was that the million dollar DP? It, it has. It has worked, has it not? Did he not catch Chris Wong neutral jumping on the other side? These guys are haters, man. Keep it up, Uma. Keep doing that shit. Maybe don't do it that often, though. Oh, nice. Confirm. Nice. Very good patience. Important for Uma not to crack there, I think, because if his defense... You know, if it just folds, then that's a bad sign for the rest of the set. Good jump back, too. Mosquito. Nice, I like it. Challenges immediately after a frame advantage button there with this that medium punch. Oh, Chris Wong almost perfect parried that. Uma walked up and Chris Wong just reacted to the walk up with perfect parry. Man, the bravery after that walk up scan, Chad. Oh, a tick throw. Dude, that connected. It did connect. Crazy late there with the active frame gonna stand like it. Ah! One hit from Chris Wong should do the trick, but Uma gets the hit first and he takes the round. That is huge. I mean, if Uma wins this round, I, he's winning the tournament, correct? Like a 2 0 lead? The meter advantage, though, makes that very hard. But if Uma wins this round, he, he like, wins the tournament, right? Like, it's very, very likely. No curse, but just, like, simple tournament understanding will tell you that that is too big of a lead. Oh, my God. He had the hit, and he didn't believe. If he died, he could have canceled that into level three, so that's probably why he did it. Oh no, I don't think it's gonna hit. That is terrible. Oh, he level two'd? Uh oh. Could he not have built level three and then maybe. I feel like level three was on the table there, man. Uh oh. Oh, Chris Wong guest parries and he's wrong. That's a that slows down how long until he can drive rush. Now he can drive rush. Oh, punish! <gasps> it didn't reach. Man, Uma has done that so many times. You guys, he saw that he did the same thing against Lashar. You guys remember that? He did the same thing against Lashar. He did the long range drive rush. He did that in his groups too. He's been doing that a lot. He like drive reversals and then whip punishes their attempted punish. Because Luke's supposed to be able to crouch and medium punch that. Oh my. Don't fold, Chris Wong. Don't fold, man. I'm trying to see some games. Holy shit. Oh, air flip out punish. That is a weakness of, of uh, Luke stringing you up a sandblast in the corner. What? Huh? Oh my. Guys, I... I, I, I mean... He can just drive impact. <gasps> he built it. He built the drive gauge back. Oh, you guys were hating on him doing that, by the way. Jammers and Jeremy trying to rob Uma of a million dollars. They were talking shit about him doing that. Well, well, well. These motherfuckers are Chris Wong fans. Oh, no punish. Uh, it's, I think it's over, guys. 
I I think Uma's winning winning the video game tournament. I think he's winning the video game tournament. I, there's no. I don't know. I think Chris Long is is behind. Like not in not in the game necessarily. I think like mentally Uma is feeling too good. All right, he's dead here. But he's he's fine. No, he's fine. Watch. Let him cook. You guys don't believe. Let him cook. Watch. Watch. You guys are not believe. You notice? Okay, that was not good. <laughs> you notice you guys are non-believers, by the way. Like. You see the non-believers in chat doubting Uma, ICFC Asia champion. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. He's gonna DP him. He's checkmated, by the way. He's gonna safe jump him. He's gonna hit a button. Di Chris Wong has no counterplay. Get the Fuha store. Well, well, well. Did I not tell you that he's the million dollar man? There you go. Jury. By the way, motherfucker's trying to tell you she's not a top 10 character. And she's bad. And she fell off. And all that kind of made up shit. And then there you go. You've seen it yourself. There you go. Oh, Sien. Wait, is Sien there, the translator? <laughs> Second at Singapore premiere and first at France premiere. Now you are second in the cap he's got to do the interview why how were you able to stay so strong consistently for so long uh. i am a salary man i'm not a full-time gamer and then after work every day i practice four hours per day damn japanese prayer always invite me to custom room to pray fans for them and The champion, Yuma Kagami, um, also is my practice partner. Yes. There you go. He said he's a, a salary man who plays four hours after work every day. Quit your job and play full time. <laughs> $300,000 richer. Is, is Sian the translator? I think, I think he is. Has been building up to this moment. And now we have... Why else would he be there, right? Cup 10 champion, Oh my god, that thing is cool looking. <laughs> They're like, Sian, you lost. All right, you're our translator, bro. Come on out of here. What a sweetheart. Like he's, he's getting away from the... So he's getting out of the shot. Taiwan. Hold on. Oh. That's my man, Shin. Okay, can we please clap it up for Shin out here for the translation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you're from Taiwan. Funny. How much has your community supported you in the process of becoming a champion? I hope he's giving him some of the money for translation. Uma's like, let me cut you 100k. You want to say thanks to the whole Taiwan fighting game community and his family and friends. That's why he has a chance. All right, let me pay out Uma. You're right. I got the channel points. They're still playing the JP thing. There's a whole lot of talk about who belongs to be at Capcom Cup. A lot of people doubted you. And now Bro, did they? All of them did wrong. people doubt when Uma? Did you know that you could win this tournament? I don't want to be toxic. I won't be toxic. I had something he to say. He says when the Capcom announced the prize money of one million, he he says that he knows he's gonna get it. Damn. Speaking of one million dollars, I think you. I, I, I got it, brother. Don't worry about it. Speaking of one million dollars. <laughs> I think you need two hands for something else right now. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise oh. for our first FGC Millionaire! Damn, he flipped it? All right, can we be honest? The host is a beast for that. That was a good little flip. <laughs> that was, that flip? You, that guy needs a million dollars, okay? Ladies Did you see him flip it? Like that guy, you, you hand the check to him. Hand the check back to him, Uma. Let's look at the Capcom Post oh, 2024 trailer. 
All right, let me see some more offline events for the love of God. All I and offline tournaments. How much? How are they playing the JP theme? Oh wait. What happened? Why was why was Ed there? What's happening? Is there any news? Is it at the end? What's the plan? And now we have a very special huh? oh. of, of Capcom. This is the announcement. Mr. Haruhiro Tsujimoto! This, this is the announcement. Okay, okay, okay. No, they said there's no game announcements, but they're going to announce the tour for next year right now. JP theme is too loud. I can't hear shit. Next year's overall price pool distribution will be similar to previous years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they're saying it's not $2 million anymore. Oh I wonder how much... The prize money However, is. However, oh. next year's first place prize money for Capcom Cup will be. One million dollars! Okay, so it's the same prize for first. Wait, it's less prize money, but someone wins a million again? So it's gonna be like if you get second. <laughs> They give you like 10,000? <laughs> the JP theme. The, maybe the distribution is different, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what it actually is, yeah. The Pro Tour will be back in June 2024, so stay tuned for more information. June, okay. So there's a pretty big break there. Thank you very much. So we don't have CPT until June. Wow, that's a while. That means that Akuma is probably like he's supposed to be spring, right? Akuma is probably like April, May, and then after that, you got like some time to train a month or two, and then boom, we're into it. Yeah, that means no CB as an event. It means maybe CEO though. Oh, is this just the end? Is this just the rollout video? I basically been talking for the last eight hours straight. Because I had a 30 minute meeting for the Tekken event. You guys want to... Okay, since Capcom didn't have an announcement, do you guys want to see some of the players in the Tekken thing? You guys may know I'm hosting a Tekken tournament. Uh, we're going to assign coaches and announce players in the next couple of days. So you guys will know everything that's happening. There's 24 streamers in it and six coaches. Yeah, I can tell you that Rosemi Lovelock will be playing in the tournament. I also can tell you that... Um, a couple of other really big streamers have reached out to me. I mentioned earlier that Saikuno is going to be playing in it. You guys know Boxbox is going to play in it. Skara, Toast, they're all interested in it. Lily. There's a lot of really big streamers from a bunch of different communities. Can I kick Super TF out of it? Yeah, I'll make that happen. Let me just get his ass out of here. I'll have details in the next couple of days. We'll post the whole player list since everybody's locked in now. And then host, post the whole coaches list. And then we'll post the teams probably, I would guess, by the end of the week, maybe. Something like that. And uh, it's going to be next week so not tomorrow's monday the week after this right it's gonna be march 8th and march 10th those are the competition days yeah i think you guys will like it there's a, there's some wild players on the list like i i think you guys are gonna be like huh <laughs> i think you guys are gonna be pretty surprised